All right, this update is brought to you by Staples Stores. We'll start with the Aztecs' amazing comeback victory last night over Colorado State as they won 71-55 to after trailing by 14 points at the half. Next up, it's the big one. They take on New Mexico this Friday at VA House Arena, 7 p.m. tip-off, 6 p.m. is when our pregame coverage starts right here on San Diego Sports 760. And NFL news of the day, the 49ers announced that they have fired defensive coordinator Steve Wilkes. Now, during Staples Citathon, you can save up to $180 on select chairs, desk chairs, computer chairs, even gaming chairs in store only. Offer N32. See associates for details. Stop by Staples today and grab a seat. All right, San Diego and Southern California, what's going on? This is hour one of John and Jim. We have Mike Fair at MLB Network Radio, who's been really good to the show and is a really good voice on all things baseball. And he will get us ready for the Padres season and spring training and the moves they need to make. Mike Fair will join us coming up at 310. Lamont Butler, you may know him. Yeah, I've heard you, of him. The story, you know, I don't need to tell you. But hit a shot or something. Lamont Butler, who had his first career double double last night. Yeah, it was wild to hear that. Jaden saying to me post game, he's like, I was wondering why Lamont was so aggressive for that late rebound. He's like, <laughs> that was his tenth, I guess. That was his first career double double. So Lamont Butler will join us at three thirty. Programming announcement: Bob Scanlon scans will join us Friday at three p.m. Kevin Love AC it. will also be on the show on Friday. Spring training, of course, is here. Valentine's Day is here. Now I didn't fall for the trap. I got the card. I got the chocolates. I got the flowers. You got the sneeze. Yeah, that too. AI, please, Brent. Achoo. Ah. By the way, before we do anything, obviously we're thinking about people in Kansas City. Yeah. I yeah. mean, and I, we don't even want to get into it because we want to talk sports. But of course, you sympathize for what's going on in Kansas City. It's absurd that we have to deal with this. And I, and I feel for those that are impacted. Everyone does. But you, we don't, our people here, to, I, you just don't even want to deal with it. It's so sad, that stuff. So we're thinking about people in Kansas City, but we're not going to spend the next three hours on it because it's just it's just the world, you know? It's stupid. It's a celebration. and It's have, a celebration, have, exactly. Have, have that celebration be ruined by those evil people. Just It's the worst. Stop. It's the absolute worst. And, you know, it's unless some, unless things change and never things won't change just let these people enjoy i mean come on it's sports people aren't going there to be to have their lives ended right we're, we're, we're there to celebrate yeah, it's so a sports it's, it's, fun. it's ridiculous uh valentine's day that's a good segue yeah um so i did the chocolate i did the candies i did the flowers i did the card now aaron said i don't need anything jim yeah. did you fall for the trap year two or not i did not you didn't fall for it this Hell time. No. Hell no. You can't fool Hell me once, Jim. I'm me. No, yeah. good, good no chance did I fall for it. Even though she, she doubled down, doubled down. And I go, are you sure? And she goes, no, I don't want anything. She had a very nice post this morning on her Instagram about us. And then, oh, did she? You know, she texted or whatever, but I, no chance in hell. Right. Was I not going to do something for valentine's day this year last year i messed up dropped the ball i uh I, I took her word and it bit me in the ass this year i'm not taking her word i don't care what she tells me i don't care if she tells me 20 times don't do anything for valentine's days for me because we're getting married complete trap trap of traps so uh, ultimate trap game <laughs> yeah ultimate trap game it's like i hear what you're saying but I'm not listening to you, especially coming off your birthday weekend, which was like a, a nine day gala yes. with events and performers. And like, it was an unbelievable experience. So you, <laughs> you have to celebrate Valentine's day. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, well, nothing, but last night at Vieja Serena and Lamont Butler is going to join us at three 30. That's what we're speaking of last night at Vieja Serena is an epic half, an epic game. One for the ages Somebody on the text line didn't like that I said at some point in, in post that I was like, yeah, they were left for dead at the half. He's like, no, they weren't. I Stop. Yeah, they I mean, were. they were in trouble. Did you watch that game? At the half. And they came all the way back and they blew the doors off Colorado State late. I mean, we've seen a lot of San Diego State over the years. We've seen some great wins, Jim, obviously, and Viejas is Viejas. But man, last night kind of speaks for itself with what they did in the second half. I mean, that first half compared to the second half. You tweeted about it. I did. It was analysis that you said you can only get on John and Jim. Yeah. The Aztecs in the first half, 
Yuck. <laughs> that was your tweet. The Aztecs in the second half, very good. There's my breakdown of the game, I like everybody. That, That's my breakdown. Aztecs first half, yucky. Aztecs second half, very good. I mean, they allowed You're 11 welcome. points in the second half to like one of the nation's elite offenses with arguably the nation's top point guard in Isaiah Stevens. But Lamont Butler had something to say about that because Butler guarding Stevens in the second half, Stevens didn't score in the second half. So Lamont's going to join us again coming up at 3.30. And San Diego State's a really good position, folks. And now you're just working on that resume and strengthening it. And they got a huge game against New Mexico Friday night at 7 p.m. You can hear right here on San Diego Sports 760. San Diego State, New Mexico, the only team to beat the Aztecs at home last year. New Mexico, coming here Friday night. Big one. This one is the game of the year so far. Yep. I think everybody circled this game after the loss to New Mexico on the road. And it was, okay, uh, this Friday, yeah, that's that's the big game, and it's proven to be right. I mean, New Mexico had a uh, did they have a comfort from behind victory yesterday? For they, did. they did, they did, one by a point on the road. Yes, setting up this game on Friday, where I do think uh, I think the winner wins. Uh, the winner has is in the driver's seat. Winners in the driver's seat. It's still like not a foregone conclusion if this yep the winner on Friday will one hundred percent win the Mount West regular season. Yep, but. It helps you a lot. It puts you in a very good position. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I mean, last night's second half was special. I mean, it was just flat out. The crowd in the second half was so sensitive. He off the energy in the building. And Colorado State shot three of 25. They were out-rebounded by 27 in the second half. I mean, this is a half. You play this game a thousand times, it doesn't play out like this. The other 999. It was, it was that unique of a second half for San Diego State. All right, Mike Farron, MLB Network Radio, is going to join us in just a moment. I think here's my big question for Mike. Can you go into the start of the season with Tatis, Profar, or either Marcy or Merrill, and feel okay? Well, guess what, John? Padres might tell you or might show you, yeah, we're going to try. Maybe. That's what I'm going to ask him. Like, Does he think they're going to try that, or are they, do, they, do they have something up their sleeve? Are they going to make a trade? Are they going to sign someone? Or are they actually going to do Profar, Marcy, Tatis, which is great, Tatis. But the other two, are they really going to try to get away with that to start the year? That feels like getting away with something. Well, it depends on um, who steps up, who performs. And if you get big-time performances from your star players to kind of carry the load here, mm -hmm. um, then I think you could get away with it for some time. But at the same, but you know, you're looking at the experience level of Jackson Merrill and Jacob Marcy, and you have Jerkson Profar. Uh, you have a couple non-roster invite players that could, you know, be fighting for potentially a roster spot. It's let's be real here. It's not the best situation when it comes to the outfield with the Padres, other than for now Tatis Jr. Yeah, the Tatis part is great. It's awesome. <laughs> it's just like saying, you know, the Machado part is great once you get him back in the field. And, yeah. and the Bogarts part, hopefully he has a nice year. Like, I'm not worried about Tatis, Machado, Bogarts. We can have our conversations about what they're capable of doing, but I'm not worried there. Slightly worried about Machado coming <laughs> off an injury, but you get my point. What I am worried about is like Profar and a rookie getting like 500 plate appearances. Would you say that's one of the top story? What's like your top storyline of this, this spring training? For the Padres? Yeah. No, the uh, North Brewers, Ca North Carolina Tar Heels. The Blue Jays. I like that. I'll <laughs> tell you in a minute. All right, Mike <laughs> Farron, MLB Network Radio, kind enough to join us once again. John and Jim, San Diego Sports 760. Padres have reported they're like a month out. This Korea series is going to be March 20th against the Dodgers in Seoul, Korea. Mike, we appreciate you hopping on. I mean, let me ask it this way. Do, do you think that the Padres are going to, quote, unquote, try to get away with an outfield to start the season? Of Tatis, which is great. Pro far on this one year, $1 million deal coming off a down year, and maybe a rookie, some combination of of Marcy or Merrill, or are there upgrades still in store, in your opinion? I mean, you're not uh, counting on Jose Ozocar or <laughs> Oscar Mercado. <laughs> no. Last spot. Fair point. Um, so I would love to make a solid, strong prediction. But based on the way this winter has been and how it has just been so weird, I like I don't know that I can guarantee that. But mm -hmm. I, I certainly got the sense from listening to AJ Preller yesterday 
that they're still in the market to try and upgrade. You know, I, I think it's interesting that Jackson Merrill is going to get a lot of run this spring. I think it's interesting that they talked about him potentially playing a bunch of different positions during the course of the season. Um, I think he's probably got, you know, like you normally don't want to see a young player be on the bench too much, but he's got a pretty low maintenance swing. He can really hit. So I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up making the team as kind of a super utility man who can play the outfield in a couple of different infield positions. But I, I, they have to add at least one more obstacle. Now the problem is like, where is that going to be? Like they certainly would seem to have the most playing time to be able to offer somebody who is uh, uh, one of the free agents that it's left. If they liked Adam Duvall or wanted to bring back Tommy Pham or even a Randall Gritchick, who's more like a below average regular, but, um, you know, I think that they certainly seem like they're looking at the trade market. And as much as I, I really liked Marcy watching him in the fall, I think he's got a chance to be a pretty solid role player in the big leagues. I'm not sure that they want to commit to him being their center fielder going into the year. So, you know, if they're going to try and get a center fielder via trade, great. If they're trying to get somebody who, you know, can help to, you know, potentially move to teach the center and give them some power on the corner. I think that works, but there's still like two outfielders and a first base DH short, shot, type short, and that doesn't even count pitching depth, which, you know, like I think they're in better shape than the, the general perception is, but it's still not where it was a year ago in terms of having certainty in those innings. Mike, what is your general thought process about young prospects, top ranked prospects, starting at the big league level? in a completely different position that they played in the minor league level. I mean, I don't think it's happened a lot in baseball, but we we could potentially be seeing that here with Jackson Merrill. Yeah, it's not unprecedented, though. I mean, like, Manny Machado didn't play any third base in the minor league because he came up and was stuck at third. Now, you're talking about, you know, a guy who's going to be likely a uh, top three ballot Hall of Famer. Right. So, I, you know, that's it's probably unfair to compare that to Jackson Merrill, but no, I don't think it's it's all that unusual. You know, Merrill's played on the dirt enough, like playing short and in second. I don't think that would be a problem. You know, if they're going to have him try and learn left field, I don't think that's that big a deal either. So, you know, I think he's one of those. Cronenworth kind of did the same thing, right? He had a little more experience at second, but, um, you know, and he had played short in college a fair amount, but he kind of bounced around a little bit more, I think, there than he had in the minors. If I remember right, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I, you know, listen, I think it's, it's ideally you'd love to be able to get him to settle into one position, but Merrill's a good enough athlete that I think if he can handle multiple positions and be a bat that plays most every day, there's a lot of value in that, you know, I mean, it, it's everybody's always looking for, uh, you know, that, Ben Zobris type, right? That guy that can play every day, but can play a bunch of different positions well. And if you have to leave him in one spot, you know, let's say Bogarts were to get hurt or something like that, and you you didn't want to slide Kim over to short, but Merrill could go out there for three weeks and play shortstop, right? Like that, that's a really, really valuable player. I, I think because of his athleticism and his baseball acumen, I don't think it would be that big of a deal, but you're right. It's not something that happens all that often. Mike Farron, MLB Network Radio with us on John and Jim. You mentioned Tommy Pham. He's an intriguing name here because obviously he was with the Padres. He had a very nice year. What he did with Arizona was very impressive at the end of last year. Overall, his numbers were very good a year ago after some down years. What do you envision the price tag to be on Tommy Pham? Oh, that's a really good question. I mean, I think some of it depends on whether or not he's looking for a multi-year agreement. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think if he is, you're probably in that, I would guess somewhere in that, you know, 16 to $18 million total range. I think probably, you know, like if we're going, eh, maybe it's a little bit north of that even. I don't know. It's like maybe one plus a mutual option. I can see him somewhere in, you know, like 8 to $11 million, somewhere around that for, for one year. And I realize that's a pretty wide swath. But I think some of it depends on how much playing time is going to be guaranteed. I mean, FAM was – a little bit of a surprise just based on what he'd done the previous couple of seasons to be, you know, a solid average regular last year. And, and, um, you know, I'm sure he wants to get paid like that, which would be, you know, closer probably to 13 or $14 billion a year. But I think some of it's going to depend on the plate appearances and, and, and whatnot with that. And at, at the same time, like, I think there's a lot of value that fan brings. And I think, 
I, I don't know if it's fair criticism of the clubhouse. Because the thing is, is that like everybody from the outside talked about how bad the Padres clubhouse was. And people that I trust who are around that team said, no, it wasn't really an issue. But, you know, Tommy Pham's not afraid to put a boot in anybody's backside. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like that's the, And that's one of the beauties of Tommy Pham. I mean, he's as tenacious a competitor as exists. And so, you know, if you wanted somebody to help bring that commitment to winning and that focus on what it takes to compete and win every night, I think Pham is that guy. So I, I think it's probably, you know, I mean, I guess it's probably one plus some kind of an option, and maybe it's like, you know, eight million this year with ten for next, but it's a mutual option, and part of that's like a three million dollar buyout. That would be about where I would figure he would be, kind of on the high end. When do you expect the uh, final wave of free agents to uh, make their, you know, I guess jump to a team? Like when? When do you when do you expect the, uh, the Blake Snells, the Chapmans of the world, the Bellingers to? Uh, to get on a team here sometime before august I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> good answer i mean i think I, I really think that based on what we've seen over the because this is not unprecedented right in the last six or seven years i do think that that layoff or signing late impacts pitchers more than it does hitters just because they're not in that routine early enough so i would think Montgomery goes and then Snell probably after that. And it might be a little bit longer wait on Bellinger and, um, and Chapman and even JD Martinez in that. I mean, just cause like it, it takes what 50 plate appearances for a position player to get ready tops. Most of them can be ready in 30. And with the way they play, you know, backfield B games, I mean, you can do that quick. Now, if we're talking about some of those guys, the possibilities for the Padres, obviously, the season starting March 20th ramps up a little quickly, you know, for that position player group. But I think it's probably more like, you know, all things being equal, right? Like if everybody were starting on March 30th, I think you're probably saying by March 15th, you would start to see those position players be off the board. And I think a couple of them will sign well before that. Some of the, I mean, like Adam Duvall is a really good role player. I don't know how much you guys have watched him, but mm-hmm. like he's, he's going to, there are, you can focus on the warts, right? Like he's not going to have a high average. He strikes out too much. He's not a crazy walk guy, but he's a really good defender in the corner outfield. And he does it for power. Good teammate. He plays center in a pinch, although I think at his age, I don't necessarily want him to do that, but he did start in the center field for the Braves and they won the world series. So like, there are some of those guys that I think you'll start to see end up on rosters here. But the other thing to keep in mind, and this is something that AJ mentioned yesterday too, was that the, the trade market is kind of late developing. And, you know, there was some buzz today that the Pirates and Marlins are in pretty serious talks. You know, we've heard the Padres link to, to Duran, the, the center fielder, Jaron Duran from the, the, the Red Sox. Like there's some trade stuff that I think could get sparked here in a little bit that might create some opportunities for some of those teams to sign. Like if the Red Sox were to trade an outfielder, backfilling with somebody like Gritcher could do ball would certainly make sense. Mike Farron, MLB Network Radio, with us right now on John and Jim. So similar to the outfield question, what about the rotation question for the Padres? Yes, they have frontline starters, some off injury, in the Darvish-Musgrove conversation. Then they add Michael King, who had a really nice half of a year with the Yankees a year ago in their rotation. What about beyond that? Like, do you think uh, Padres fans should be confident that there's enough depth to fill that fourth and fifth spot? Or do you think AJ Preller needs to be aggressive either via free agency or trade to address one of those starting spots? Yeah. I mean, I think they probably need external help, but I would say that they may need it at some point. Um, you know, one other thing that this, and you, you guys kind of lived this a couple of years ago as Padres fans that, the change in the playoff format has shifted things around a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. So that idea that you have to have everybody ready to go earlier in the season is probably less important when you're talking about 84 or 85 wins getting you into the postseason of the National League. And I would assume that that number is right around there, you know, again. So maybe it buys them a little more time to see what they have with a couple of those guys. I wouldn't be surprised if they're looking at um, players on minor league deals who have some big league starting experience or coming back from injury or something like that that they can fill in. I don't have any specific names I can give you, but somebody like you know, guys like that, or if like you know they wanted to, to 
Zach Greinke wants to pitch. If you want to know low enough value deal, you know, I know the numbers were not good last year, but that kind of thing I could see them doing. And then if you're in the mix, you address the deadline, right? So I think that's a possibility more than anything, unless all of a sudden there's a controllable starting pitcher that they can shake free by using, you know, their prospect capital. And, and, you know, what they've done in terms of building that farm system back up in about a two year time frame is pretty impressive. So, you know, AJ certainly isn't afraid to deal prospects. Um, and so you could see them maybe making a move like that. But I think at this point, it's, I, I just, I can't put a finger on who would be a name that would be a fit for them. Let's say they wanted to go down like the Michael Lorenzen route or something like that, which, you know, Jake Odorizzi, who we interviewed today, like those guys aren't necessarily the sexiest names, but they may help to bring a little more stability and come relatively inexpensively. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting point. Uh, Mike, we really appreciate your time. We're looking forward to the Star of Spring training for the Padres next week against the Dodgers, this Soul Series coming up in less than five weeks. Appreciate you doing it, Mike, in San Diego. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. No problem, guys. Take care. Great stuff. Mike Farron, MLB Network Radio. We'll react to that later this hour. Lamont Butler on the other side off his first career double-double, getting ready for New Mexico. You may recall last year against New Mexico. It was Butler at the buzzer before Butler at the buzzer. Lamont Butler joins us next. All right, NFL is over, but the NBA season is still here, and there's no easier way to get in on the action than with Underdog Fantasy and their Pick'em Game. With the Pick'em Game, you pick between two to five players, select higher or lower on player stats. If your picks hit, you can win up to 100 times your money in a single night. Yeah, me and John love playing Underdog Fantasy. It's legal in California, and when I play with my favorite players, I always love to go higher. It could not be easier. And if you like fantasy sports, you're going to love underdog fantasy. It's the best and easiest way to win. Who's your favorite player, Jim? Um, Let me answer that for you. Steph Curry. Warriors are playing tonight? Uh, They are playing. Yes, okay. I think. I'll fade that. Whatever the lower <laughs> is on Curry's made threes tonight. Okay. You can fade that or you can go higher on Curry made threes tonight. Go to their easy to use mobile app or go to underdogfantasy.com. Sign up with promo code John and Jim. J-O-N-A-N-D-J-I-M. Write that down. John and Jim. Underdog is going to match your first deposit up to $100. You're going to love the mobile app. Plus, they'll give you a special pick of higher than a half total point to use on your first pick of entry. Yeah, it's Underdog Fantasy. Promo code John and Jim to get your first deposit of $10 or more matched. Plus, your special pick must be 18 years or older and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms do apply. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.org.
This update is brought to you by Staples Stores. Aztecs came back to beat Colorado State last night after trailing by 14 points at the half. Next up, it's the big one. They take on New Mexico this Friday, 7 p.m. tip-off. 6 p.m. is when our pregame coverage starts right here on San Diego Sports 760. And NFL news of the day, the 49ers, just a couple days after Super Bowl 58, have fired their defensive coordinator, Steve Wilkes. Now during Stable Citathon, you can save up to $180 on select chairs, desk chairs, computer chairs, even gaming chairs in store only. Offer ends 3 2. See associates for details. Stop by Staples today and grab a seat. All right. This was hard to imagine for me last night. So San Diego State has this remarkable comeback. They outscored Colorado State in the second half, 41 11. In the process, not only did Lamont Butler completely shut down Isaiah Stevens in the second half, Lamont also recorded his first career double-double. I couldn't believe that had not happened previously. And Lamont Butler back with us here on John and Jim. We'll get to the double-double. I want to start with the result because I know that's what matters to you more. You get the win with this epic second half. You hold Steven scoreless in the second half, Lamont. First of all, thanks for hopping on. Have you ever been a part of a game like that that flips so much from one half to the next? Uh, first off, I want to say thank you guys for having me on. I definitely appreciate it. But um, to answer your question, uh, I don't know if I've been a part of a game that, uh, you know, that crazy in the second half. I mean, uh, we had a big-time effort in the second half by everybody. And, uh, you know, holding them to 11 points is crazy, you know, <laughs> regardless of anything. That's, that's crazy. That's a credit to our defense, our coaches, and, uh, and everyone just buying in. What what was the message at, at halftime? I it didn't didn't look like Dutch was too happy with the first half performance. I bet you guys weren't happy with the first half performance. What was that one thing that happened at halftime, or was it? And nothing that was said. It was everybody knew that you had to be better, and you just were. Uh, the message at halftime really was, uh, you know, Dutch say we got to change our mentality. The only way we can win it is if we change our mentality. You know, the first half, you know, they hit a bunch of shots, and we weren't playing particularly well, and. Uh, you know, second half, everybody's mentality was just to win the game. You know, um, defensively, we, we played amazing. Uh, it was just a lot of grit. You know, Jay Powell got a bunch of offensive rebounds. Micah, you know, Jaden played, you know, beast-like. So it was just a team effort, and uh, we figured it out coming in the second half. So Lamont Butler with us right now on John and Jim. Aztecs have New Mexico Friday. We'll get to that big win last night over Colorado State. So Jaden was on with me post game last night, Lamont, and I asked him about your double double. And he's like, yeah, that last rebound, like he was really fighting from uh, fighting with me for it. Like, Hey, <laughs> well, you must really want this thing. And that's your 10th rebound to record your first double double. Well, what does it mean to you? I couldn't believe that. I mean, that you hadn't done that previously. What, what does it mean to you to grab 10 rebounds in a game like last night? Uh, it, was, it was really cool. I mean, I actually didn't know um, until after I came out, <laughs> somebody funny. was like, Oh, congrats. Congrats on the double double. I was like, double double. I, mean, I, I ain't have that many assists. And he said, no rebounds. I was like, Where, really? I don't remember rebounding that much. But uh, you know, I, you know, it's definitely a, a, a cool feature, a cool stat uh, for me. And you know, just trying to continue to win. When Jaden goes into unstoppable mode, it's <laughs> and that second half was like an all American type of performance from him. What's it like to be on the floor with Jaden when it's it's essentially get him the ball and he's going to score? It's amazing to see. I mean, you know how much work work Jaden puts, uh, you know, day in and day out. So to see him go out there perform like that, uh, you know, we we're feeding him the ball. We want to see him eat, and we, you know, we know uh, him him doing all that is just gonna make the the team better, and uh, you know, his opportunity is gonna come is just as much as ours. So you know, it's, it's great to see him out there killing last night. All right, so Lamont, you've been a part of dozens of games at VA House Arena at this point in your career. You've been a part of some of the great atmospheres in the history of the building. You also were here, I think, at the beginning of COVID, obviously, as well. Um, where does last night rank for you in terms of the way the crowd energized the team? Um, it's, it's definitely probably top, top two, top three. Um, What's ahead know? of it? A senior night, maybe? Um, I'll say even before I was here, I came to a game with Matt, with Matt Mitchell. Uh, he was killing the second half versus Utah State. Kawhi mm, Leonard. Yeah. Leonard. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that game, that was very loud. And then, you know, this one was, this one was, was amazing. I mean, the energy in there was, was crazy and the atmosphere was amazing. So uh, it definitely uh, riled us up and allowed us to go on that run. You know, getting the win last night sets up even more of a crucial game versus New Mexico this Friday. 
for you guys, have you been, I know it's one game at a time, but maybe circling this game against New Mexico after what happened on the road last time you guys faced them as, as, a, as one of the crucial, most crucial games of the season coming up for you guys? I mean, yeah, you know, anytime we lose and uh, we have a chance to, to play a team again, we always want to, you know, our, our get back and able to, uh, you know, revenge what we, you know, what, what happened um, at New Mexico. So, uh, you know, we, we've been waiting for it. I, I think we'll be ready. And we, I think we're going to uh, go out there and try to win. Can you describe the challenge of New Mexico specifically? Because I feel like they've given you some really good games. I mean, obviously last year, if not for your shot, uh, New Mexico wins at the at the uh, buzzer before you hit that <laughs> shot at the buzzer. They beat you at Viejas. The last team to win at Viejas was New Mexico last year. I mean, the guard play, and they got some really talented forwards too, but Donovan Den and Jamal Mashburn Jr. and Jalen House. H- how much of a challenge is it for you guys, specifically the guards against that that trio? Uh, you know, they, they have really good guard play. I mean, uh, they create a lot of problems, you know, defensively and offensively. Offensively, they're, you know, attacking, you know, they're, the great shooters can get to their mid-range pull-ups, and then defensively, you know, House he's a he's a he's a menace. He's always, uh, you know, around the ball or, or disrupting plays. So, you know, it's definitely a challenge every game that we play them. But uh, as long as we stay together, stay connected, I think we can get it done. Is this, you know, you've been here a long time, Lamont. Is this the toughest the conference has ever been for you, as and as far as like this many teams vying for the top of the conference at once? I, I definitely think so. My four years is definitely tough. It's not what he's been. How do you feel about the team today, Lamont, compared to where you were? I, I ask this question a lot. Like, I'll ask it of Dutch. I'll ask it of the media. Like, a year ago, maybe similar resume, similar record, comparable metrics. Nobody knew you'd end up in the national championship game. You were in March, I remember. How do you feel about the team today compared to how you feel about the team a year ago? Um, You know... I just feel like we've hit that stride to where we continue to get better and better each game. And yeah, even uh, you know the Nevada game, I feel like we we had a we had grew as a team in that game. Though we we came out with a loss, but I feel like we're growing as a team, growing as our connection um, on the court. So I think uh, you know sky's the limit. I think we, you know we got this last half of, of the conference uh, to play, and then onto the tournament. I think we're going to uh, be hitting our stride. Lamont, I I love name, image, and likeness because of opportunities it's provided for someone like yourself. So I see on social media at some point this week that there's going to be a Lamont Butler buzzer beater smoothie. Okay, <laughs> so this is it. This is amazing. I mean, this yeah. is what NIL is for. This is at Nectar Juice Bar, five six nine four Mission Center Road here in San Diego. Uh, this is this Saturday from ten to noon. Okay, be one of the first. To try it, free autograph with proof of purchase, photos, giveaways, and more with Lamont Butler. How much have you enjoyed these opportunities to connect with the community, to take part in these opportunities uh, in this new era of college athletics? Uh, you know, it's really fun for me. I mean, this is a really cool thing. You know, this, this is something that you grow up, you know, kind of kind of dreaming about. You know, having you know your own you know own things named after you, and uh, I'm just just really glad you know, I have the opportunity to do that now. You know, NIL is it's great for me and, and that sort, but uh, just even to give back to people in, in San Diego, you know what I mean? I mean, I feel like it's going to be be a, a great outing on Saturday, and uh, the smoothie's really good, so hopefully people come out and try it. <laughs> what's it taste like? Yeah, what's the flavor? Yeah, what's the flavor? Uh, I'm going I'm to I'm wait for people to taste it. First, oh, but. I like oh, that. A little tease. I like that. I like the tea. Okay, there so get there Saturday. You know how to sell. <laughs> this is after the Friday night home game against New Mexico. Saturday morning, Nectar, 5694 Mission Center Road, 10 to noon. Free autograph with proof of purchase, photos, giveaways, and more. The Buzzer Beater Smoothie. Lamont Butler's Buzzer Beater Smoothie. Lamont, thanks for doing it, man. We'll catch up at the Friday night at VA House. Great stuff. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. All right. Pretty cool. He didn't know I was going to go down that path because I didn't talk to him before yeah. the conversation, but I saw you know, this from him and his father. I mean, again, it's I love a good smoothie and I love a good NIL opportunity. I it, mean, it's yeah. made for circumstances like, you know, San Diego State student athletes and what Lamont has accomplished in his career, putting a, you know, giving him an opportunity um, and for him to interact with the community and fans. And the Mesa Foundation has done a fantastic job connecting local businesses with student athletes like that's the whole purpose of nil if you can't get a law i mean there are some athletes that are making millions of dollars and they're getting 
like KFC ads or, you know what I mean? Like they're getting like national endorsements. We get it. But getting yourself out in the community, getting yourself partnered with community-based companies and showing off, you know, student athletes to the public and giving the public an opportunity to help out these athletes. Like that's everything you want. All right. On the other side, we have details of the Padres new TV deal for 2024. Mm -hmm. We'll react as well. We'll react as well to what we were told earlier today by Mike Fair and MLB Network Radio about Padres needs here heading in to 2024. That's next. Stay with us on John and Jim. All right. Hey guys, it's Shay for, we're just catching up with Lamont Butler on the Mesa. And speaking of the Mesa, the college areas, natural grocer, windmill farms, they've got you covered throughout the course of your work week, your weekends as well for all your game day needs. But during the week, it's the best spot for lunch. I'm there each and every week, picking up a sandwich from their deli. The reason to do it, your eighth sandwich is free. It's affordable. They really keep their prices low. They pride themselves on that. They use fresh, high-quality ingredients as well. Easy, in-and-out access for a quick, affordable, healthy lunch. They've got so much. The grocer, and everything you could possibly imagine, right? Organic farm fresh produce and meats. Amazing beer. You got to see their craft beer selection. It really is incredible. They're centrally located right by Montezuma Mesa. Family-owned. Trevor and his family serving San Diegans for 20-plus years. Years, even if you don't live near the college area or work near the college area, you can find Windmill Farms on Instacart, have your groceries delivered directly to your doorstep. They have weekly specials that update every week on Instagram, also at windmillfarmsmarket.com. That's windmillfarmsmarket.com. A reminder, during your work week, getting ready for your weekends as well, shop local, shop at Windmill Farms.
I wrote it down. And he kind of said it like tongue in cheek, like we've been saying. He said they have to add at least one more outfielder. So because he sees the same thing we see, and it's not enough. I mean, you, you can tell me some guy's going to have a good spring. That's fine. That's great. I hope it happens. But Profar rookie Tatis is not enough. And that's Mike Fair and MLB Network Radio earlier today. So we can react to that. In addition, the Padres have announced 2024 broadcast plans. Okay. Let me just read this and we can react. Padres.tv is the rebranded direct to consumer streaming option for all home and away games, excluding national TV exclusives. Will be available for free for spring training games mm-hmm. and only $19.99 a month or $99.99 for the full regular season. Padres.tv 2024. What do you think? A year ago, it was what, half season. What was it? 60 bucks? 70 bucks? 70 bucks. 1999 a month, I think? I think? 70. 70 bucks? 70 yeah. bucks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just a reminder Bob Scanlon will be on this Friday, yes. 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Right to start the show. Um, he will be part of the MLB TV Padres.tv production this upcoming season, like mm-hmm. he has in the past. But I think it's great. $100 for the entire season. What was it? 60 something cents a game? Yeah, 64, I think. 64 cents a game. They're not going to have a, all 162 on mm-hmm. Padres.tv. Is it 155? 155. 60, 60 to 70 cents a game. So, yeah, it's a pretty good uh, deal, isn't it? And the best part about it is the blackout restrictions do not apply. Right. Um, I believe the Padres did tweet out something today along the lines of if you don't live in like the San Diego County, mm-hmm. let me let me pull it up just to make sure. If you're sure. out of market, you can still get single team streaming. Is the price the same though? Let me check. Real single quick. team streaming. What do you got, Brent? Late checks. Uh, no, I think it was a hundred if you just wanted to do Padres, but they mm-hmm. said that pretty much every game was going to be on if it wasn't on a competing network. So pretty much the games that aren't on ESPN, right. aren't on Apple TV, Peacock, Peacock which uh, is so only the, add that up. Handful, what is that? Yeah. Six. Yeah. If you know, that. so you get one fifty six on Padres TV, something like yeah, that. Padres TV is uh, for fans in the home television territory, San okay. Diego, and is a separate service than the MLB TV out of market package. Gotcha. Um, out of market Padres fans can subscribe to MLB TV. Is that more money, Jim? Or is it not? Is I think it might be like one twenty nine or something. It's comparable. It's very comparable. You can get all thirty teams for one forty nine. Yeah. Well, right. I looked before the show, and they had if you want like all the teams with the Padres thing, it was like one ninety nine for the year. Okay. okay. And if you just wanted the Padres, it was ninety nine. Yep. yep. So yeah, Padres season ticket members receive a free MLB.tv all team subscription as a membership benefit. Um, however, only users that specifically purchase a Padres.tv subscription will be able to stream Padres games in the San Diego area. Mm. Uh, members need to add on this package. Members should not enable their free MLB.tv all team subscription to watch Padres home games. Instead, they should subscribe to the new Padres.tv package. Hey, did you know the first two spring training games, which again, isn't the Korea series, but people are excited and it's eight days from right now, the 22nd. Did you know the first two games versus Dodgers at Dodgers? I'm talking spring training are on ESPN, both the 22nd and the 23rd. I don't know if the 1210 start is Pacific or Mountain. Is it Pacific? I think they play 1210 Pacific. Uh... I forget. I, th- I we'll think it's it like up. an hour ahead right now. Well, they're an hour ahead, so I don't know if they're like in Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. So I, whatever it is, so they might around lunchtime, one o'clock Arizona time, time and 12, 12 10 Pacific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I back to back ESPN broadcasts for the 22nd and the 23rd. N- not a lot of the spring training. I mean, some of them are on Padres.tv, but you do get your first two available to you on ESPN, the 22nd and the 23rd. And all spring training games on Padres.tv will be, be free. Correct. Correct. Which is great. I think, uh, I mean, for me personally, just for yep. me personally, and I know some people out there might not feel the same, mm-hmm. but for me personally, I love this because one, I don't have to pay 180 bucks a month. <laughs> like I, I used to on spectrum or uh, direct TV plus or whatever I had. I figured you were doing it just for the Padres, just for the Padres yeah. on Bally's. Yeah. So I had to pay an extra like $70 on top yep. of the cable to get just the Padres. This hundred bucks, 
for the entire season? Yeah, sign me up because I'm paying 70 bucks right now for YouTube t- uh, TV, which is fantastic. Yeah, I agree. And now only 100 bucks for an entire year for which is $15 Padres. a month for six months. For me personally, I love it. I know some people out there might not like it, but also too, watching it on my phone or my computer, iPad, super simple, super easy, and a million times better than that crappy Bally app. Smart TVs, of yeah. course, they have the app as well. One thing I did notice too that I think is going to happen is, uh, when you sign up for it, it's mm-hmm. one of those things where you're not going to be able to sign up for the Padres part of it on the app. It's one of those where you're going to have to go onto the web based version no, of yeah. MLB TV and then sign in and then log in and do the Padres thing through there. Then mm-hmm. I think once you do it through there, then you'll be able to access the app and everything else. But yeah, it looked like one of those where you're going to have to do it that way to where, because last year I tried to do it through the app and through like the MLB TV app on my PlayStation. It didn't work. There wasn't even an option. For well, it. here's the other thing to consider. I'm with Jim and, and it's, it's great by the way, for the consumer, you know who it's not great for is the unfortunately Padres. in the short term, the San Diego Padres from a, from a business perspective, it, it might be good and for its fan base, which is great. It's, it's good for Padres fans. I really do believe it, but this was a team that went into last year getting $60 million yeah. from Bally sports. That was the guarantee before it went under 60 million. Well, we did the we crunched the numbers earlier today. If they had one hundred thousand subscribers, which is a big number, yeah, at a hundred dollars per year, that is ten million dollars. Yeah, so that's one sixth of the TV money. So I don't know how you make up the gap. And a year ago, they were guaranteed eighty percent of the money by Major League Baseball. They were guaranteed forty eight of the sixty. Now they're like fifty million short. And like you said earlier today on the wrap up show, and we've talked about it, surprise, they're asking for fifty million dollars in loans. Because to make up the gap. Yeah, that's not new. Uh, they needed to cut payroll to get under the CBT. They lost their TV deal. They asked for $100 million in a loan from baseball. Right. Baseball gave them 50. <laughs> right. It seems like they chose uh, maybe to allocate that 50 to the losses from the TV deal and then still cut payroll to under the CBT. And uh, who knows if they would have gotten the full $100 million or who knows if the Bally Sports deal, TV deal, was still a thing. Like, maybe Juan Soto's still here. Like, I don't know. No, that's a good point. Maybe Blake Snell's still here. Yeah. Maybe other moves happen. Um, but I think just from a consumer standpoint, not thinking about the Padres' I losses and not thinking about anything else, just from my own personal viewing experience, if you're telling me all I have to pay is 100 bucks for the entire year, Yes. To watch this game, watch his games. <laughs> Sign me up. Sign me up. 64 cents a game. I'm completely with you. All right. On the other side, we're going to get to the wrap. By the way, in the four o'clock hour, we have tickets to Earth, Wind, and Fire to give away. Trainwreck Radio will do that in the four o'clock hour. Also, yeah, I hate to do it, but we have to do it. What it sounded like from NFL films on field Dude. when the Niners elected to take the ball in overtime is truly unbelievable sound from the game. On Sunday, Super Bowl 58. We'll play that for you coming up in the 4 o'clock hour as well. It's hour two of John and Jim, and it's next.
All right, this update is brought to you by Staples Stores. Aztecs, big come from behind victory last night versus Colorado State as they won 71-55 after trailing by 14 points going into halftime. Next up, they take on New Mexico. It's the big one this Friday at Viejas Arena, 7 p.m. tip-off, 6 p.m. pregame right here on San Diego Sports 760. And NFL news of the day the 49ers fired their defensive coordinator, Steve Wilkes. Now during Staples Citathon, you can save up to $180 on select chairs, desk chairs, computer chairs, and even gaming chairs in store only. Offer ends 3 2. See associates for details. Stop by Staples today and grab a seat. All right, San Diego, Southern California, what's going on? Hour two, John and Jim, this hour, your chance to win tickets to see Chicago with Earth, Wind, and Fire, North Island Credit Union Amphitheater. That is August 31st, so be listening for your chance to win those tickets. I didn't even realize this story. We can get to this real quick before we get to the wrap. The Warriors made a bid for LeBron at the trade deadline. That's a that's a real story? Apparently. What, what was the bid? Uh, there Well, there was never discussions as far as players and anything there they was, was they called and they said no yeah reports were that uh joe lakeup called genie bus um about because remember when lebron tweeted out the hourglass yeah that was something that they viewed as maybe we should call and see what's up just because of where Based the lakers are at yeah of course Based but the that. warriors were also the warriors are don't have a better record than the lakers or didn't at that time no they don't um but they're not just going to give up because they have Steph Curry and Draymond Green who came back and they're actually doing kind of well right now. But it was a very, one of those short conversations of, Hey, so is LeBron available? And then it became, well, it, you need to talk to his agent, Rich Paul. And Rich Paul was like, nah, he's not. He wants to stay with the Lakers. And that was the end of it. Maybe the Lakers should have called him, been like, is Steph available? They weren't the only team, by the way. Only, they weren't the only team that called on LeBron. Yeah. But the, you have to, th I, I would think of it from this perspective. LeBron's son is in Los Angeles. The, the 76ers called Daryl Morey. That's fine, but I'm just saying LeBron's son is in Los Angeles. He's made it a priority right. to be with his son, who, by the way, had that cardiac situation within the past year. But at the same time, you don't think that uh, wherever LeBron's at, he can travel somewhere like that? But not as simple as just being there. Well, if you're in the Bay Area, it's not like this long travel distance. You have a you have a private jet whenever you want to go somewhere. True. No, I, I agree with that, but it's not the same as being there. Like his son is literally five miles well, away. Well, he's not well, it doesn't matter because he's not going anywhere. He was never going anywhere, no, is my point. Never. It's it's gonna be completely on his terms. Now, what's gonna happen next year? Is it gonna be he's got a player <laughs> option or a mutual option? That's a good question. I think it's player player option. I would assume it's LeBron. He probably has nothing but good player point. options. That's a good point. To see LeBron play with Steph. <laughs> well, we've seen, I mean, oh, my brother would like lose his mind if the Lakers traded LeBron, LeBron James, or if LeBron went to the Warriors. <laughs> it, let's just, if, the, if LeBron was on the Warriors, would they even be, hold on, bro. Would they be favorites? Would they be favorites? No. Of ESPN. Yeah, like what they want to tie on. Yeah, exactly. What do you got, Brent? Uh, he has a player option for fifty-one million for 20, 2024, oh. 2025. Oh, that's not bad. I can't live on that. That's not bad. He needs more than that. Okay. He, well, can, he can barely maintain his six homes off that. Right. That's like the Profar deal. I mean, you're you're <sighs> the Profar deal. You're not you, the Lakers are. We're never going to trade LeBron, and I don't think LeBron's going to go sign with the Warriors this offseason. <laughs> it would be interesting if he did. That would be very interesting. Well, well I, his son, though, can still... His son could be in the NBA next year. Is that going to happen at this point he could, or not? But no, well, he's not, okay. he's not but, really good. Yeah. But, yeah, the way he's played, played. this season, yeah. they're thinking he went from being a potential like second-round pick to, to not undrafted, so he might want to come back. He's averaging like five points a game. Yeah, yeah. He, he's shown moments, but yeah. he needs a lot more seasoning. Yeah, the season it. ends in weeks, and they're not going to the tournament. No, USC is under 500. The team sucks. Yeah, so he only has a couple of weeks left in his in his year. All right, at 430, the sounds you have to hear from the Super Bowl. I mean, you just have to hear it. What happened with the overtime decision from Kyle Shanahan? You will hear it directly from NFL Films on field later this hour. Chance to win Chicago and Earth, Wind, and Fire tickets. But right now, let's get to this.
Will the winner of New Mexico, San Diego State win the Mountain West regular season title? I'm going to say yes. Um, what's the standings as of right now? San Diego State is one game behind Utah State in the loss column. Okay. Obviously, the Utah State game on the <laughs> that road becomes big. Yeah, becomes the big game. But the only way to get there is to get through New Mexico on Friday. You get through New Mexico on Friday, then we'll say the exact same thing about the Utah State game as we're saying right now about the New Mexico game. It's the biggest game of the year. Mm -hmm. If you want to win the Mount West regular season title, is it the end all be all to make it to the tournament? No, it really isn't. But they are the defending champs in the regular season. It definitely helps your cause if you win the regular season title in a conference that is deemed one of the best in college basketball. Um, and it puts a lot of, uh, it takes off a lot of pressure. I know they would still make it anyway, but to not have to go into Vegas and win the conference tournament, even though, even if they don't win the conference tournament, I still think they're making the, the NCAAs. Right. But it would, it, it just, it, it would help. It helps. By the way, the love right now for the Mount West is so significant. If you go to ESPN.com and click on college basketball, it not only is it a picture of Jane Ledee, it's bubble watch is the mighty mountain West headed for a historic selection Five Sunday. Teams. And by the way, bubble watch at ESPN has moved San Diego state from should be in to luck. And there's still a lot of basketball to be played, but that is ESPN here today. Regarding the question, I think if San Diego State wins the game, they'll find a way to get at least a share of the title. I think if New Mexico wins the game, they still have tough sledding. They have really hard road games still remaining. So I'm not certain, even if New Mexico wins at Viejas on Friday, that they're going to win a share or more of the title. But yeah, you could make the case. A very compelling case. The winner of this game has a really good shot to win at least a share of a regular season title. Next question. Will the Chiefs three-peat next season? Probably. <laughs> I mean, Against two. I mean, they're never they're never going to lose, it seems like. I sent you something last night. You told me it was too long, didn't read. Yes. Um, something about his stat. Mahomes is great. I'm like, I already know this. It was so long. Like, he's never, he's the best. I'm like, yeah, I know. I watched. I'm torturing myself. I know You this. really know, are. You're sending me all this stuff, and then you're like, I don't want to talk about it. I'm like, why are you sending it to me? I don't know why I'm doing this to myself. Maybe just because I, I just need to get out of my system because I can't hold it in. Yeah. I don't Maybe know. It's probably good for you to get it out. Anyway, um, Patrick Mahomes basically late in games when <laughs> trailing is a perfect seven for seven in coming from behind in the postseason and winning those games. He does not lose when he trails. Well, you mean he's won seven times or he's seven for seven through the air? No, no, set like winning seven times. Like there's been gotcha. seven games when he's been trailing. When he's been trailing with, I think, two minutes left. He's like one, and he's won every single one of those games. That's crazy. The closest to him after that is Brady. He's won five of eleven times, and Mahomes is seven for seven. And Mahomes is seven for seven. So basically, uh, you need to be up by like three touchdowns with two minutes left to go, or you're 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 gonna lose. Doesn't he have as many double digit? Come from behind wins than like anyone, and he's only twenty eight. Dude, they won a game versus this the, is the regular season. They beat the Bills when they were trailing with thirteen seconds left. Right, and they <laughs> won a playoff game a few years ago. It was against the Texans. They trailed like twenty four nothing, like two seconds into the game. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. 20, they the, won it by like twenty points. The only two games that they've lost, um, Burrow was Burrow when the, the when the um Bengals were actually trailing by I think eighteen points. Right, and came back. And they came back and won that. And then twice to Brady. In overtime. And then Brady at home in the first year of Mahomes before he had a championship in overtime. And then obviously the Super Bowl where they got their ass kicked. So you're <laughs> saying that, so you're saying that you think they're going to three-peat? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's inevitable. I'm not betting against them. I, and I don't care what happens in the regular season. If they're in, I'm not betting against them. Yeah. And they're going to be in I hate it. the field. I hate and that. I mean, would you feel good you know, if it's your team against the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, no, you don't feel good. No. Because you know that if they're they're never out of a game. If the Chiefs make the Super Bowl next year, they are going to win it. Yeah, because then everything's <laughs> on the line. They're trying to three P. It's, it's, it's just a foregone conclusion. Chiefs make the Super Bowl next year, they will win. I don't care who they're playing. I don't care if they're playing the 85 Bears defense. Like they're going to find a way to win. 
Yeah, I saw Mahomes again today, doubling down on this narrative that we were the, you know, we were the underdogs. I knew that was going to happen. And then, and then someone tweeted out a photo of ESPN prognosticators going into the game. Thirty-one of forty-six picked the Chiefs to beat the Niners going yeah. into the game. So, yeah, they were technically, by Vegas standards, a very short dog. I mean, this wasn't some twelve-point dog, one and a half, two and a half. But that fit, that feeds right into what they want. We can't win on the road. We're an underdog. It worked perfectly for them. There was a stat, and I don't know how these people do it. <laughs> right. Um, that they they looked at um situations in games, uh, potential turnovers that didn't become turnovers, uh, all of this stuff that based off of like the luck factor, right? Like, oh, that was a lucky bounce, or this was lucky. Throughout the entire postseason, the Chiefs ranked number one as far as luck factor goad or went i guess mm -hmm. is that even a, yeah yeah went is a word yeah goad is not right. really a word but went is one mm -hmm. um yeah but the, mahomes is the goat yeah goat and i'm not <laughs> saying they were just lucky the only reason why they won is because they're lucky no. mahomes is the best is the third best quarterback of all time yeah i said third to as who? of right now to who so well, obviously brady I'll give brady you. and montana come on stop what do you mean what do you mean? What do I mean? You can't even compare them. Mahomes would run circles around Joe Montana today in the four, NFL. That's laughable. Today, yes, but overall, John, four Super Bowls, four for four. Yeah, but it's not just sheer touchdowns, numbers. Four for four, zero interceptions. No, that's not right. If yeah, it is. No, no, I don't think so. I don't think he has seventeen Super Bowl touchdowns and no interceptions. He has no interceptions. I don't think it's oh, I think it's 11. I think 11. It's 11. 11. Yeah, 11. I mean, no, you. I mean, listen, give Mahomes. Are you going to bet against Mahomes here in the Montana conversation? As in, give it time. You know where Mahomes is heading. Back in the 80s and, the, and then the early 90s, everybody was saying the exact same thing about Joe Montana that they're saying now about Patrick Mahomes. You can't beat him. And then they were true. They was right. No one beat, no one beat Montana. And the only person that's beaten uh, Mahomes is Brady. Yeah, but to put Montana ahead of Mahomes right now, based on everything we've seen, if you want to say he's on par, okay. To put him ahead, I, I don't think we can If do we're that. talking about uh, yeah, overall, Super Bowl titles. If we're, if we're talking about overall statistics, like just the overall statistic, then yeah, Mahomes is better than Montana. But we always go Only back. rings? We always go back to rings talk. And if we're going to well, rings, the talk, Charles Haley is better than all these I, guys. I know, and Bill Russell's the best right. NBA yeah. basketball player of all time. And Steph it's, Curry's never going to be. How many does he have? Five. Is four. Yeah, so he's not going to be whoever has six. Who okay, has six. But like we always talk about those things in the rings, as being a, one of the biggest reasons why a player is ranked ahead of someone Montana else. Montana or Mahomes seven zero four seven zero started with team. Montana or Mahomes. Player wise, player like just pure player wise, and everything that he is as a player, Mahomes is probably the best player ever. Like he is, he is on the way to becoming the best player ever. Dude, he could have run for like two hundred yards in the Super Bowl. Yeah, I know, John. I watched. <laughs> I mean, he he runs circles around. I mean, listen, let's see through said. the career. He could finish with a much better career than Tom Brady. It's still possible. He's twenty eight. I know, and that's why I said he could win as ten a, as a just player. Uh, yeah, Mahomes is probably the best of all time. Because of his arm, his legs, to everything. Niners should trade for him. Yeah, they really should. Just like they should call. Warriors called on LeBron. We asked, me and you were talking about that yeah. last night. I said, what would it take? We said, I said it would take like, and Joe, this is Joe dumb. Burrow and nine. I said, yeah, first nine first. Picks. Joe, or like Justin Herbert and nine. I mean, again, it's never going to happen in a million years, but what would it take? What would it take? It would take everything in the world. Next question Is Bill Vinovich a better NFL referee or college basketball official? He's Here goes old. Jim again on a five minute rant. Bill, I'm sure you're a nice guy, but uh, come on, my come on, man. What the hell? What are you talking about? What do you specifically? Are you, you talking know, about the Super Bowl? Or you, you talking about? You know what I'm talking about the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. I know he's. I know that the <laughs> metrics say he's not really a great college referee, um, but he's been in what three tons of Super Bowls? Tons of yep. Super Bowls. Yep. Every Chiefs Super would Bowl it, win. Would right? it kill you to call maybe one holding penalty against the Chiefs? Just one. So is he a better NFL or college <laughs> official? He has the question. It's like, he sucks. He's better at college. You're going to say college. <laughs> I honestly don't know. What I do find amazing is you're doing Super Bowl 58 in front of 150 or 200 million people. And you're doing San Diego State, Colorado State two days later at Viejas Arena, a different sport out off the Super Bowl two days later. It's the fourth Aztec game he has worked this year. I don't really have a good feel for it, but if you've worked Super Bowls, you're probably a better NFL official than you are 
college hoops official. What do you think he will remember more about this week? Probably so, the 41 11 second half is my guess. I mean, that's a or pretty... the coin flip. What do you think? 41 11 second <laughs> half for the coin flip. I honestly, I no joke, sure Jim. About that? I wanted to ask him, and I wasn't gonna. I was just gonna. I was gonna ask it this way: Were you surprised that the team that won the toss didn't defer and take the ball second? I think it's an interesting question for the head referee, but I didn't ask him. I really wanted to. If I had a moment, if he came over like during a break, I would have asked. Next question. Next question. Should the 49ers hire Bill Belichick as their defensive coordinator? <laughs> should I put on 30 pounds of muscle? Well, it's not should, it's can. And it, they're the not like should, yeah. should, yeah, yeah, yeah should, yes, they should. should, yeah, can, eh, probably not. Is there any real chatter other than fandom? Hey, our defensive coordinator wasn't good. We got rid of him. Let's go get Bill Belichick. Is there anything in the ether that would suggest it? No, not really. The only thing that you could put two and two together is the relationship that Kyle has with Bill. Okay. Dating back to their trade with of Jimmy Garoppolo. Okay. Bill basically gave them Jimmy Garoppolo because he, I'm not saying he wanted to help Kyle out, but it was a little bit of a solid because there was this okay. whole power struggle with the Patriots about keeping, you know, Jimmy over Tom, but then uh, Kraft, that's you know overruled Belichick and they kept Tom over okay. Jimmy, and so then Bill said, "Screw, screw that! I'm tra I'll trade Jimmy to yeah. one of my buddies," mm -hmm. and that's what happened. That's the only connection between the two is that they're that they're close because of of his dad, Kyle's dad. So coordinator for Bill Belichick. I'm just thinking, like, do you do you do it? I'm not saying. Listen, you could maybe you win a Super Bowl, and but I thought did, did Darren say during the fusion or was it all fair? I thought it was an interesting point we talked about. Like, well, if you bring in Belichick, Belichick isn't he kind of breathing down the throat of Kyle Shanahan? I think maybe that would become a talking point for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But uh, in that building, <laughs> I don't think it would be. You would. You would. You. This is. This is how this would go, in a alternate universe. Right. All right. Here's the phone call. Uh, yeah. Bill, how you doing, man? Uh, I know you're out of work, but uh, oh yeah, it's a good way to start the conversation. But uh, look, how much is it going to cost? One year. Dude, it's not money. You don't think so? Le you don't. It's like LeBron wasn't going to Golden State for money. You don't think if he offered him twenty five no. million for one year? No, I don't think it's. I don't think it's. Hey, I'm out at twelve, but I'm in at twenty four. It's if, Bill Belichick. Okay. Well, you know what the Warriors did? They called. <laughs> they knew they were probably getting in the no, okay. but they called. They called. I, I respect so, that. If you want to yeah. call, call. So that's what I would expect to the 49ers to do. You're probably going to get a no. Mm -hmm. oh, is the likelihood of it happening very high? No, it's actually probably less than 0%. It's not high. Not high at all. But you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Right. You got to at least call. Get hear the no like you have to physically hear him tell you no because if you do not call then you've got brandon staley oh god i'm just saying if you don't call <laughs> and you never asked bill and it comes out in like right. four in months like gq like oh i would have taken that job that bill would have been open to being a defensive coordinator again in the nfl for the right position and right situation arose then everybody's going to kill kyle even more Trying to equate it. I mean, we've seen some interesting things here recently. You got Chip Kelly, head coach to coordinator. You had Rocky Long locally, head coach to coordinator. But it's different. It's Bill. Yeah, as so I'm saying, like this <laughs> is, I mean, Bill Belichick, the not the winningest, but the most accomplished coach in football history is at the end of his career taking a coordinator job. Yeah, that'd be like Phil Jackson coming back to be Darwin assistant. Ham's assistant. A little bit. I mean, I don't know. Coordinators are important. Don't get me wrong. They're huge. It's vastly important. But I don't know. That doesn't get him closer to the all-time wins record. Closer to an, you know what I mean? Like, that doesn't accomplish. I don't know what his goals are, though. I don't know what his goals are. I mean, it's one of those situations where Bill is still a really good defensive guy. Absolutely. I mean, you look at these, the Patriots teams the last couple of years. They've sucked. But it's not because their defense. <laughs> right. I and mean, their defense has been fantastic at times. Mm -hmm. I mean, th this team this year was horrible, and their defense at times didn't give up any points. <laughs> they were really good. They would lose games like ten to six. Right. Yeah, so, they did. So it's it's Bill's fantastic defensively. 
and you know he wants to still coach because he was interviewing for the Atlanta. Falcons head job and, and everything. It's about an ego thing. And if Bill does not want to be just a defensive coordinator or just run a defense, he wants to still be the head coach somewhere, which I'm sure he probably does, then yeah, it would never happen. I mean, what, but you have to at least call. What what is gonna happen? What, what's most likely here? He sits for a year, the jobs are filled, he's and then he returns. Or is it more likely he has retired at this point if he gets a year out? Like, is he gonna is he gonna try to get back in one year from now? I would I would say, I don't know, man. I, yeah. I think I think a year off type of thing, and then he's back. Yeah, maybe, but we'll see. I don't know. But if you're the 49ers, you have to at least call, and uh, it would be fascinating if that happened. It would be fascinating to hear the conversation. Oh my goodness, because if if they did not, I mean. They didn't want to. That's that's all I thought about this week, by the way, or last week. Because mm -hmm. usually um, during Super Bowl week, you can bring in consultants from outside the organization to help with st strategy or give some type, not like full game plans and everything, but like, hey, we have a question about what to run against like this defense or what to run run against this offense if you're a defensive guy. And I saw that the Chiefs brought in Eric Bieniemy. Well. Uh, I was thinking to myself, why wouldn't the 49ers bring in the, one of the only head coaches to ever beat Mahomes to help out maybe with your defense a little bit and Bill Belichick? Just just yeah. as a consultant. Could, I don't know the particulars on that. Yeah. I mean, be, yeah, you can do it. You can saying, do it. Yeah, right. You can do it. I don't know, man. Maybe Bill was uh, vacationing. All right. Wait until you hear Travis Kelsey's reaction to the Niners taking the football. We have Travis Kelsey's reaction. You'll hear what it sounded like on field. Bro. The audio from NFL Films, the moment the Niners took the football in overtime from both sides. Really incredible sound. You have to hear up next. Plus, later this hour, your chance to win tickets to see Chicago with Earth, Wind, and Fire at the North Island Credit Union Amphitheater. Stay with us.
All right, the audio you need to hear, Travis Kelsey, Super Bowl 58, when the Niners took the ball in overtime. You'll hear what it sounded like on field as well next. All right, this update is brought to you by Staples Stores, Aztecs. Big comeback victory last night versus Colorado State as they won 71-55 to after trailing by 14 points going into the half yesterday. Next up, they take on New Mexico this Friday at Vieja, 7 p.m. tip-off, 6 p.m. pregame right here on San Diego Sports 760. And NFL news of the day, the 49ers, after just one year, fired the defensive coordinator, Steve Wilkes. Now, during Staples Citathon, you can save up to $880 on select chairs, desk chairs, computer chairs, even gaming chairs in store only. Offer ends 3 2. See associates for details. Stop by Staples today and grab a seat. Fire tickets to give away. We'll do that in 15 minutes. Jim, cover your ears. I mean, you probably, you've already heard this, but you're going to have to stomach it again. I think we should actually start, Brent, with how it sounded on field. And then we'll hear from Travis Kelsey with his brother and his podcast about his reaction to the Niners taking the ball. So, you know, NFL Films documents everything. It's kind of incredible. It's amazing. It's like the most ridiculous thing. Like, wait, what? You have, you mic'd up everyone? I, I, I was listening to some of it. And after the Niners intercepted Mahomes in the third quarter, yeah, one of the Niners safeties was like, see, look, he's a regular quarterback. And I'm like, eh. he did, did he say that to the Chiefs? No, he said it to okay, him. Okay, on his side. Okay. I'm like, bro. No, nah, it's a long game. One, he's not a regular quarterback. And two, you're Deshaun Gibson. Like, you're going to be on, not on the team next year. Like, what are you doing? I hate that stuff. Yeah, I know. I know you do. Okay, this is NFL Films. This is the coin toss, the moments before and after of the coin toss. Again, kind of infamous now. Niners win it and take the ball. This is one minute of what it sounded like both sides. You're going to hear from like Mahomes in there. Who else are you going to get? Kelsey is in there. Uh, the fullback, was it Kuchak? How do you say his name? Kyle Juszczyk. Yeah, Juszczyk is in there for the Niners. Just take a listen to this for 60 seconds. Um, you good with the toss? Yeah. Which way you want to kick it? They call it. They call it, right? Yeah, they're called a coin flip. It's their coin flip, right? Which way do you want to kick it? 
We want the ball, Fred. San Francisco, you are still the visitors. What is your call? Tails again. He called tails again. It is tails. Overseed. You want the ball? It's way to kick. We're kick that way. San Francisco received first and over time. Good luck, gentlemen. They want it. They want the ball. They wanted it. Hey, they wanted it. They wanted it, baby. We want them to have the ball. They want it. They can have it. Hey, even if we score a touchdown, they still get the ball. I didn't know that. We won the toss. We we're going to kick off, too. We got what we wanted. Whoa. I mean, you had a feel in real time. This is weird. Okay. <laughs> but when you hear it like that, it gets way worse. Here's the thing. I, I, let's say what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. I am going to just go to my grave. Right now? No, <laughs> I kind of I feel like it. I'm just going to go for the rest of my life as thinking no matter what would have happened, if they kicked it off, the Niners. Or scored a touchdown instead of go for instead of have three in overtime. Mm -hmm. No matter what was going to happen, they were going to lose that game because of Mahomes. <laughs> so it was over. Even though they played them even for sixty minutes, they're losing the game. I, Strategy throw it out. Yeah, because it's Mahomes. And Jim has dubbed it a nexus moment. There's no way. <laughs> There's that, no way. No outcome will but ever change it. I see no. what you're saying. You're saying, listen, no matter what, listen, it was the wrong call, but even the right call doesn't prevent us from the result. I think so. Like, that's like how the, you're going to sell like it. the end result. Once that game got to overtime, mm -hmm. once the Niners didn't stop the chiefs in the regulation. fourth quarter in regulation from tying that game up. Once they didn't get the third and five and kick the field goal to go up 1916, they gave the ball back to Kansas city. They were asking for it. To me, it was pretty much. Over. Okay. That's, a fine way to look at it. But the truth is, because you know as well as I do. That's my, that's my fan I, speak. I know, but the truth is you want every advantage you can get. And advantages can be the differences between winning and losing. And you don't want to give your opponent the advantages, which is all that happened there. Kyle Shanahan gave the fourth down to Kansas City. Like, you're going for it on fourth down. Plus, gave them the choice, even if Kansas, excuse me, if the Niners score a touchdown, Kansas City could score a touchdown and go for two and not give the ball back to the Niners. So they, they gave it to Mahomes. It was in his hands to win or lose the Super Bowl, as opposed to the alternative, which is them not touching the ball second. And yes, and say they do kick off to Mahomes. Okay. Let's go through that scenario. Right. They score a touchdown. Kick off to Mahomes. They score a touchdown. Do you think, do you think Mahomes is going for two? I do not. Okay. Um, so now you about have... Seven. Yeah, they're up by seven. Mm-hmm. And they need one stop to win the game. And they're going up against a Chiefs defense that has given up a total of six or nine points, six points at this moment, six points, mm -hmm. which was just scored by the 49ers in the last like four months in the fourth quarter and overtime. You okay. are asking then the Niners to drive down the field. And I get it. Which is what they did. I know they did, but they didn't score a touchdown. So true, but they didn't go for it on fourth down either. And if they were down seven, with the ball second, they would have gone for it. I, I think, and I'm just, my fans telling me they're damned if they do, damned if they don't. You may be right. We'll never know. We'll never know. But I think no matter what, Mahomes is going to win that game because one, the defense that was being called by Steve Wilkes, who just got fired today, was <laughs> that's crazy. I mean, Kyle was Kyle had to call a timeout to change the defense. Did you notice that? I did notice the timeout. He called it because, because he did not like the defense they were running. All they did. So he basically is becoming like the defensive play. Well, he's like, well. why are we? Why are we having everybody up the line, and then all of our DBs at the the line to gain? Like, why is everybody right. ten yards away from the receivers? They're giving yeah. them six, seven yards every single wow. play. Was this an overtime or fourth uh, quarter? Overtime, overtime and fourth quarter. Romo yeah. called him out for that. Romo did. He's like, "What are you?" Yeah, doing? I thought Romo was actually good. There were some moments I late like in the Romo. game he had some actually. Like, yeah, sick of he Romo's was good and bad. Thing, but he's like, "Why are you blitzing yeah. Mahomes here? It's not working all game. Like, the 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 best thing that's working for you is just having your four up front getting to Mahomes that's and right. putting on pressure and putting people in coverage." Travis Kelsey. So he has this podcast with his brother. I've Somehow he has time for this. Winning Super Bowls and dating Taylor Swift and hanging out with his brother. I truly hate him now. Like, I know I, you do. I, I, I kind of liked him. You brought him into our lives. Late. I know. 
I hate yeah, him. I hate this him. is a, a really remarkable back and forth. Travis Kelsey with his brother earlier tonight. You win the coin toss. That's that's what you get. You get the opportunity to have the advantage, and they handed it right over to us. Yeah, well, Damn I mean, it, it, thing. I'm not trying to harp, harp on the guy, but it was a huge – like when they said we want to receive, and the ref looked at Fred and he said, are you sure? I didn't say that. I didn't say <laughs> yeah. that. Dude, you sure you want to receive? Knew. And he said, I yeah, was, yeah, I want to receive. I want the ball. I was, I was just like, I got, I jumped out of my seat and said, they're getting, hey, hey, here we go. Here we go. Let's go, boys. Perfect. They want to receive. We get second possession. We know exactly what they want. Defense, hold them. Just hold them to three. I don't like, just hold them to three. We're going to go down here and win this thing, baby. Freaking crazy. Really was. I was texting Nick in the, before that even happened, because we go over the same situation in playoff football. It's, fr- it's a mindset <laughs> standpoint yeah. that once, the the Chiefs mindset, if they ever went to overtime in the postseason, was we're if we win the toss, we're kicking off. Right, like last licks. And bottom they, of the ninth for Mahomes. And when you practice that scenario to kick the ball off and receive it second, and then it and and you're like, okay, well, this is what would happen if we don't receive it. Like the Chiefs planned for that exact moment. And everybody on the Chiefs was like, Oh my God, this is exactly what we yeah, practice. What we want. For. This is exactly what we want. Mm-hmm. And the mindset. That's why to me, it, they, they, that's, that was it. It was done. The mindset was they weren't losing that game. And now, Kelsey, now I, I, I get what he's saying. He's like, Vinovich said, are you sure? He didn't say it. No. He, you just heard the sound. He literally didn't say it. Yeah. He said, hey, tails, and, the, and then Warner receiver said, we want kick. the ball. And All right. Then, yeah. you, for San Francisco will receive or whatever. Yeah. But he didn't say, are you sure? No. That but, would have been unbelievable. Yeah. And no, I, I've been seeing like people regurgitate what Kelsey said there. Yeah, but that's, that's not, not true. truthful. It's yeah. not true. That's not truthful. This whole, Good let job, me just yeah. say this real quick. This whole third possession thing, is dumb. which nobody had ever seen this game. To be fair, nobody had ever seen the new overtime rules play out. Of course, it happens in the freaking yeah, Super, Super Bowl. But <sighs> this whole idea of, well, you, you we're going to get the ball third. You're not getting the ball third because they're there going for two. There is not going to be third possession. They're not, they're not going to put it in the hands of you to have exactly. sudden death. Exactly. You're going to win it or lose it. Yes. what's going to happen. They're, they're not exactly. giving you the chance no third to possession. go and win it. They're going to win it there. And I would bet you a lot of money that the play that the Chiefs ran at the goal line to win that game was their two-point conversion play. Yeah, exactly. I agree with that. I agree with you. So guess what? <laughs> you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. You're you're losing to Mahomes either way, I feel like. You're not stopping him. It's over. We'll never know. Unless the unless the Niners uh had some miracle up their sleeve, which of course they didn't because that franchise can't win a big their game. Their play call was Ever. like, let's just not block last the best in the last 30 years. The last 30 years. All right. Jim is over it clearly. Call 877 767 4760 if you want to be a contestant on Trainwreck Radio. First two callers are eligible to win a pair of tickets to Chicago and Earth, Wind, and Fire. One of you will win. Call right now if you want two free tickets to Chicago and Earth, Wind, and Fire. North Island Credit Union Amphitheater, August 31st. The number to call, 877-767-4760. First two callers will be our contestants. Trivia, Trainwreck Radio. Again, 877-767-4760. Plus, you're going to hear from Fernando Tatis Jr. in the 5 o'clock hour. You'll hear from Joe Musgrove on his injury-riddled season in the 5 o'clock hour. Stay with us.
All right, Trainwreck Radio is on the other side. You'll hear from Fernando Tatis Jr. on his offseason coming up at 5 p.m. and Joe Musgrove on his injury riddle 2023 as well. Stay with us. Twenty-four for him upcoming. You'll hear from him in the five o'clock hour. Joe Musgrove comments on really disappointing twenty twenty-three, most because of injury. So you'll hear from both Matisse and Musgrove in the five o'clock hour. We have Jim's back page for you. It should be enthralling. <laughs> it should be enthralling. I sent some. No, I'm serious. I, I think what did, what did you have yesterday? Oh, we, we didn't have one yesterday. Didn't have one yesterday. No. Yeah, that was enthralling. No. All right, let's play. All right, three questions to contestants, one lifeline. Today's two contestants, we have John and Anthony. John, you called in first. Do you have your choice of John or Jim? Who do you want to go with? John. John and John. Yes. That's All right. Ring. Yeah. John and John. This should be the new, new uh, show show name. S- sounds like a law firm. Yeah. I John like and that. John. An- I don't like it. You Anthony, know, like- you get me, okay? Got it. All right. Brent, what's today's question of the day? You're like those insurance commercials, John, John, and Jim. John, John, and Jim. Yeah. All right, guys, believe it or not, Selection Sunday is only four weeks away from this Sunday. Hard to believe. John knows. Yeah, I know. He's got a counter. Yeah. He's got a countdown clock going like it's episode of 24. Mm-hmm. Today's question Name the six Mountain West teams that ESPN currently projects to make the tournament. Ah. So ESPN currently is projecting six Mountain West teams to make the tournament. Today's question. Name any of the six. All right. Anthony, you like are it. up first. What is your first guess? You do have a lifeline if you choose to use it. San Diego State. was first. Oh, hold on. Here. Uh, okay. So, uh, uh, no, John chose me. 
Yeah. Which means Anthony, Anthony is then first. the first contestant Correct. in the game. Okay. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Ant- Anthony, you're up first. What is your first guess? And you have a lifeline. San Diego, if you San Diego State, go Aztecs. San Diego State, go Aztecs. On the list. San Diego State, go Aztecs. Yes, on the list. All right, John, now you are up. What's your first guess? You do have a lifeline if you want to use it. Uh, Nevada. 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 Nice. Okay, one of the six. Well done. Anthony, you're up next, man. What you got? You have a lifeline if you want to use it. Boise State. Boise State. We have some Mountain West basketball All fans. Right. John, you're up next, man. What's your second guess? You have a lifeline if you want to use it. New Mexico. New Mexico. Look at look wow. at this. Anthony, to go three for three, what you got, man? I feel like you don't need help. <laughs> Would you? Colorado State? Okay. Right, there you go. go. Utah State. Oh, Utah State. Did he say Utah State? I heard a state in there. Well, Utah State. Utah State. Utah State. Utah okay. State. Okay. okay. Sorry. So there's still I one more available. Yes. John, yep. final guess. What you got? You have a lifeline if you want to use it. Yeah, I need my lifeline. Okay, so the one that hasn't been said is Colorado State. Is that what you're telling me? I'm not saying that. Has Colorado State been, is that one of the five that has been? No. Okay, I will say Colorado State for John. Do you take I that? Agree. I agree, yeah. The Rams on the list. Jim, thanks for giving me the answer. <laughs> like you didn't know. Knew. I was <laughs> Air Force. <laughs> Wyoming? Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to go to overtime, which I feel like we should have just started there. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I, true. yeah. Um, Brent, give us the rules and the question. All right, how overtime works is I'm going to ask you guys a question. When I am done asking the question, you're going to yell out the name of your partner today. So you're going to yell out John or Jim and don't yell out the answer. Whoever yells out the name of their partner first, you are going to either win the game by getting the question right or you're going to lose the game by getting the question wrong. You guys got it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for Anthony, who do I have again? It's Anthony. Anthony is Anthony Jim. Is Jim. John is John. Jim, got it. Got yeah. it. Okay. Today's overtime question: In what city is the Mountain West tournament being held? Jim. I Jim. heard Jim. John. All right, Anthony. We heard Jim first. <laughs> no, because I said Jim. The Mountain West tournament is going to be held in Las Vegas, like it always is. There that you know. is correct. I don't know what happened there, but Anthony is the winner. Yeah, Anthony. Even if Anthony, John, I don't John know what happened. Said Jim, uh, even John. though he meant John. John, you, we have the same name. Yeah, and we just explained it. Yeah. Uh, it's tough. Can't win them all. Anthony can. He can win them all. He can win Chicago North. Win well, that was a seconds. very that was a convincing win by Anthony. That was like the Patrick Mahomes. Of, that was crazy. Uh, Trainwreck Radio. That was really good. not going to lose. So they got all six of the teams. So there's nobody Every else team. on the list. Every team. Can you name the five teams not projected? Wyoming. Air Force. Air Force. San Fresno State, State. San Jose State. And? Uh, there's one team left, and I am blanking on them hard. They play Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh, yeah, Nevada. You No, you and No, no, V, sorry. <laughs> Anyway. All right, congratulations to Anthony. You have won a pair of tickets to see Chicago with Earth, Wind, and Fire. This will be at the North Island Credit Union Amphitheater on August 31st. We'll have more chances to win those tickets coming up later this week. All right, Fernando Tantis Jr. has spoken with the media today. Now, had he spoken previously with the media this week or not? I think this is, might be the first time Okay, because so he arrived yesterday. Okay, his first public comment since arriving in Peoria here in 2024, you'll hear from Tatis on his offseason, on what the Padres need to do in 2024. You'll also hear from Joe Musgrove coming up in the 5 o'clock hour on his injury-riddled 2023 season, plus Jim's back page. It's hour three of John and Jim, and it comes your way next.
This update's brought to you by Staples Stores. Aztecs, huge comfort behind victory yesterday versus Colorado State as they trailed by 14 at the half. Next up, it's the big one this Saturday, Friday, excuse me, Friday night, 7 p.m. tip off, 6 p.m. pregame versus New Mexico, right here on San Diego Sports 760. And NFL news of the day after just one year, the 49ers fired their defensive coordinator, Steve Wilkes. Now, during Staples Sithon, you can save up to $180 on select chairs, desk, desk chairs, computer chairs. Even gaming chairs in store only offer ends 3 2. See associates for details. Stop by Staples today and grab a seat. All right, San Diego and Southern California, what's going on? This is the final hour of John and Jim Valentine's Day edition. Hopefully, everyone's enjoying their February 14th to this point. I'm sure a lot of people are going out to dinner probably this evening. Dude, dinner on Valentine's Day is like going out to dinner. It sucks. It's well, why do, you, why do you say that? Is it because everyone's doing it and you're just doing it or because there's a lot of traffic or the places are crowded? When what, I, I went to the store to pick up some stuff for Aaron. Yes. Told you to do that. The line was like around the corner of guys with flowers and chocolates. and Yeah, you want to know why? Why don't you just hit up the dude on the street corner? <laughs> but my house, there's a dude who's got like a whole yeah, stand some of that up too. like a firework yeah. stand of selling flowers. No, you don't miss this. This is why it's no, a trap. When you see 80 guys in line yeah. with flowers, you don't want to be the guy without them. Flowers were expensive. Well, they, there's a premium on them. They know everyone needs them today. $39.99. For you a, spent $39.99 on flowers. I didn't buy flowers. Okay, I see. Well, everyone else is playing checkers. You're playing chess. Because the flowers that were still available all sucked. What do you mean? Is that subjectively speak? Like you saw them and they looked bad? I did not like what the, the flowers they had remaining there. No, it was all really? bad. I could have gone to another store, but. Uh, okay, so you said no on flowers. You no went right to the chocolate. Here's what I did. I got her a, I don't think she's listening. If she is, sorry, babe, I ruined this for you. We'll just tell her to turn your radio down now. It's, it's, turn your radio down. We got to do a show. Yeah, sorry. It happens. I got her a card that is addressed as like my wife because she kind of like likes that stuff so like mm. i know we're not officially married yet but Did this you have ai write it no no it was it's like a great idea. it's a valentine's day card that was that said like to my wife so i know she's gonna like that yeah and then i got her sneeze achoo <laughs> yeah that's it i got her a box of chocolates but it's not just any box of chocolates it's russell's chocolate like oh. on, the, on the front it says russell's chocolate so i know she'll like that as well hold on i'm russell asking Silver. chat gpd i'm asking chat gpt yeah. write a valentine's day card from a man to a woman Ooh, i like this and plan their date and um knowing that the man and woman will be getting married are engaged Okay. And getting married later this year. All right. I like this. Where, okay. Where are we going here? It's going to, okay. I'm going to say, keep it to one paragraph. Okay. Now, are you going to be doing this for our wedding, by the way? Yes. <laughs> That's, what That's Aaron exactly told, right. Aaron told me the other night that, uh, well, I'm going to need to talk to you guys. I have no, I'm going to, Aaron, who's like a, like her sister, Bob. I don't know anything about you. Bob. So you guys are going to need to like give me some info. You don't know anything about us? I know nothing. I don't know anything about Aaron. I don't know how many sisters she has. I don't know how many brothers she has. I don't know. Why what... does that matter? I don't know. I've never <laughs> officiated a wedding. I'm not Bill Vinovich. Dude, how do you not know about her sister, Bob? <laughs> you, should ask, you should ask Bill Vinovich about the wedding. My dearest Aaron. Ooh, this is from Jat Chat GPT. As Valentine's Day dawns, my heart overflows with gratitude for the love we share. Dude, this is already better than whatever you wrote. With every beat, it whispers promises of forever entwined of dreams fulfilled and a journey yet to unfold. Each day in your presence is a gift. And as we stand on the brink of our shared future, I am filled with indescribable joy, knowing that I'll soon call you my wife. Today, let's celebrate the love that binds us, the laughter that fills our days and the countless moments yet to come. Happy Valentine's Day, my beloved, today and always. Is that what you put pretty much? With all my love, Jim. What Jim wrote is, this Niners thing has really pissed me off, but here are some flowers, and I bought this candy because the flowers suck. Stop, sneeze, achoo. <laughs> That's pretty good, is it not? You got to save that? Because uh, I already wrote uh, one for Kristen. Hallmark, man. I already, okay, here's the thing. Yeah, what did you for Kristen? I, I got her. Here's what me. I've done. I've made this a three day thing. Oh, Monday, must be nice. picked up the flowers because if you pick them up Monday, they ain't 40 bucks. 
They're going up five bucks a day. Yeah, I knew that was my okay. first mistake. And like you said, the quality is going down. So yeah. I bought like the, uh, she's probably listening, but they were like twenty four ninety nine. So you get the twenty four ninety nine. That's how much Kristen, after these many years of marriage. <laughs> right. worth well, and you wouldn't get the thirty nine ninety nine for Aaron. <laughs> hey, you know how much money we're spending on this freaking I wedding? I do. I can imagine. Yeah. We're not spending anything on the officiant. <laughs> right. Um. Okay. So I got the flowers. Then yesterday I doubled down on the box of candy. Yeah, the box, the, the cho- a good box move. of chocolate. It's always just box a good move. Yeah. And then today the card. Yeah, it's always so good. just flowers, chocolates, card over a three day period of time yeah. to say, as Valentine's Day dawns, my heart overflows with gratitude. But I write the card. I don't do Chat GPT. I'm not a Chat GPT guy. I'm a. But I, w- I mean, now that I know, I could be a Chat GPT guy. Could be, yeah. If I wrote that in the card, can you imagine? There's she'd be like, this is zero percent chance she would think that I did that. She would say that's Chat GPT, like, right? What? No, she would be like, wait, why did you write this? Like, this is very weird. That is the most elegant thing you've ever said. Now, did she? Is she gonna do a card for you? No. Okay, I don't believe so. Um, what if you get home and the whole house is decorated? <sighs> She's got dozens of gifts. Well, that's what happened Mariachi last year. Band. Last year, she <laughs> said, "Let's not do anything for Valentine's because we just got engaged." Or no, sorry, wait, whoa, we didn't get engaged yet. Right. This is before. Makes sense. This is before. Yeah. She mentioned to me, she's like, this is not doing, we're not going to do anything for Valentine's Day, right? Because we were getting, I think, thinking about uh, our trip to Cabo that we had. And we're like, oh, we spent a lot of money on that. Let's just not do it. And I was like, okay. I get home and there's like a card and a balloon and there's all my favorite candy. Dude, if she did this last year, she's doing it again. And he, you got to remember this because you haven't been married. She doesn't mean what she says when it comes to holidays that are super meaningful. Like Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is a made up holiday. And you know, for it. guys, <laughs> for women, they care. Yeah, about exactly. It. It's a very big deal. There's some there's some women that care about Valentine's Day a lot. And that's yes. fine. Yes, absolutely. I'm still working on it. I'm still trying to figure out Aaron. Like last year, she said no, but then she got something and she was upset that. And then this year, you mean she told me no, and I'm like, that's a trick. I know no, I, you're not trying to figure out Aaron. You're trying to figure out women because <laughs> that, any true. any girlfriend would have said no, it's all good. But then if you didn't get them something, would have been upset. That's not an Aaron exclusivity. Right. Kristen would have felt the exact same way. Has there ever been one year when you didn't when you like you pulled at me? valentine's day i mean you got to be careful dude yeah i mean you're asking for serious trouble i i mean i'm sure i've had bad gifts or like bad i mean it's tricky what about is do does your wife care about not just like gifts but more about like public displays of affection as far as not over posting about her or maybe when we were younger is aaron into that like if you didn't today have you posted yet no not yet Oh my gosh! What Don't world are you living in? About it. It's five o'clock Pacific. Yeah, I know. Her it's, family is it's in Jersey. Too late. You know what? Her family's in Jersey. I had. I was doing it during one of the breaks, dude. I was literally <laughs> during the break. I was getting finding. So I was looking for a well, photo. Here we have post. it. We have the the text. <laughs> we have this. <laughs> by the way, can you imagine? Don't break. By the computer. way, I put. I then wrote to Chat GPT. Can you make it a little less cringeworthy? And then it wrote it again. <laughs> so we re- read it again. Is it new? as Valentine's Day arrives? My heart. It's still pretty cringy. My heart swells with gratitude for the love we share. With each passing day, I find myself more eager to embark on this journey with you. Your presence in my life fills it with boundless joy. In anticipation together. Here's to celebrating our love today. And every day as we eagerly await the day we become husband and wife. Happy Valentine's Day, my love, with all my affection. So, I mean, you could. I can I even say. That, you want me to do that? No. <laughs> Bad idea. Like, Awful idea. Why? Because I, she's smart. Yeah. She, she literally very like, smart. Well, she's going to see right through it. She's like, I don't like that. Exactly. Like, Fernando yeah, Tatis. We, we came up with it on the show today. <laughs> Fernando, she's not gonna like that. Dude. She's not gonna like that. Uh, oh no, hilarious. she's listening. <laughs> Five o'clock oh, is the hour because no. she probably is off work. Oh, what is she so saying? Listening. I love you so much. I'm so sorry. No, this is it's for the show. What'd she say? You are red. <laughs> Go to YouTube, Aaron, and watch this back. 
She goes, that's I, I can read this on air. Uh, I mean, you tell me. It's you tell me. She goes, that's clarify. <laughs> dot dot dot. Clarify what? <laughs> Last year was our first Valentine's Day together. But she then put a, a laughing face emoji. That's also one of those like ha ha ha. ha, ha, ha. Back to back <laughs> Valentine's Day. Oh, no. She knows what I got her too. Oh. <laughs> She's gonna well, be like, it's not like, well, it's not like there's a Lexus in the garage, dude. It's a, it's chocolate. I mean, <laughs> it's chocolate you know what I mean? Like, there's not a bow on a forty thousand dollar vehicle. There's a Range it's a, Rover. It's yeah. a chocolate Lexus. Jeez. Oh no. This is funny. Fernando Tatis Jr. Great segue. <laughs> <laughs> Bet he didn't forget Valentine's Day, dude. How many? This is so funny. Put on pump. Stop. Let's just can we stop? <laughs> All right. Oh no, she's texting back. I can't wait. Okay. The dot 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 here is very scary because you don't know where it could go from here. Oh. I'm still available <laughs> if you guys need me for the wedding. She said she said uh she'll take the Range Rover and like yeah. no LOLs. Yeah, this is great. Oh boy. All right, let's hear from Fernando Tatis Jr. on his off season and what the Padres <laughs> need to do better in 2024. <laughs> oh, no. I feel like it was kind of a sad off, not kind of, but it was definitely a sad off season, you know, by the passing of, of Peter. And, you know, it was it was a dagger straight to our heart, not to just to the player, but to the city of San Diego and any any just any people that you know, that met Peter. And then after that, I feel the game is gonna take care of itself. I feel like AJ is gonna be is gonna be a team that we can compete and I trust him. So we're just gonna go out there and give our best. You know, what should the, the mindset and the approach of the team be this year coming after last season? Just come together, togetherness. I feel like that that's going to be the bigger part. And, you know, do what, play right baseball games. You know, ask, just do what the game is asking us to do. Um, just forget about our our egos and who can do better. It's about it's about the team and how can how can we perform together. Thanks to our producer there, Darnay. Thank Tripp. you, Darnay. Appreciate that. Um, first uh, comments about Peter Seidler. Yeah. From Fernando Tatis yeah. Jr. You're hearing a lot of players talk about last year as like a, a big learning experience and kind of something that they have taken to heart as, okay, this is, this can't happen. Like mm -hmm. what happened last year? I think we've all identified it. We've all kind of said, you know, this, this, or this is something that uh, did not help us at all. And we can't have those things happen again this year, mm -hmm. which I think is a very positive and good sign for this team. But just, just identifying what happened last year and fixing it still doesn't change the fact that this roster isn't as good as last year's and there are still some major holes. Can I ask this question? I know. <laughs> because a year later, it doesn't have to do with Valentine's Day. <laughs> what happened last year? Like, I'm still asking it. Are we putting our finger, like, are we, where are we pointing it? Is there a, because there's like three, four theories here, if not more. I mean, what's, if we had to, if, if we were betting on this, mm -hmm. what in fact happened? Here's my take. Okay. Let's hear it. But it's like, a, like a string of events. Okay, so this is like a conspiracy theory, or one hundred percent conspiracy theory. Well, let me hear your conspiracy but theory. There are th there are some things that would back that up. Mm -hmm. Okay, number one, spring training, the Manny Machado contract. Okay, after Bogarts signs, Manny saying in the clubhouse, like, "Hey, he got my money." I think that started an initial rift. Okay, Machado Bogart's rift over what? And I don't think it's the I don't think they hate each other. I just think there there was this maybe awkward tension to start out. Like like maybe over time it took them to get to a point where like, oh dude, it's fine, whatever, don't worry about it. But on initial first like meeting, there might have been this awkwardness to it. And many I'm not saying hijacking spring training, but a little bit like the start. I mean the biggest story to start the the season last year in spring was Manny Machado said that he's going to opt out. Mm -hmm. Massive, huge, and it kind of put it kind of was a giant e break on everything to start the year. Mm -hmm. Coming off of a great 2022, and on paper a successful off season. Mm -hmm. Number two, 
<laughs> I think fan fest and the pressure. Okay, expectations. Expectations, I think, kind of swelled. Don't say that word. I know, I know. I'm sorry. I mm -hmm. think those kind of swelled to a point of when they weren't performing, you saw a lot of guys pressing. Pressing, yes. A lot of guys pressing. Very early in the season, yeah. you saw it. And number three, I think this was something that happened out through the entire season and, and maybe even started the year prior to that. And and who knows how much of effect it had on the team, but I think people in that organization knew very quickly, if you ask them this question, about the relationship between Preller and Melvin. Okay. And yeah, I think that played also yeah, a factor a as well. One. Coupled with, um, you know, just a, a lot of, Clicks. And, and you know you had some real things like Musgrove wasn't healthy from day one the weird part the reason I say like I still don't have my full pulse I think your your theories you know have validity but I always go back to these quotes of like we need to get going why are we slow playing this the the cruises the Musgroves the there were just this commentary late the April late May uh, Melvin kind of getting angry with his team Remember in May and then yeah, it tr trying different things. Not here's here's let me be clear. I'm not saying the fat and happy problem, like, oh, they all got paid and that was the issue. But it was like, were they hungry or did they think it was just inevitable that they were gonna win? Like because they had all this money attached to this yeah. team was an inevitability that they were gonna win, but they didn't really work to win the way they needed to. Were they hungry enough? That's why it is so hard in professional sports to not only repeat, yeah, Kansas City Chiefs, but to get back to a place where you just were after potentially losing. That's why I have zero faith in the Niners. Sorry. Anyway, uh, after losing in the NLCS, mm -hmm. like you said, just thinking, okay, yeah, we'll get back there. Yeah, like we're, we're just, we're due. I mean, yeah, it's we, inevitable. We got the same guys. We're mm -hmm. fine. We're better. We have Tatis. And you got to put in the work. It's a grind. Yeah. You can't just assume you have to overcome adversity. And it's a totally different season. Even though there's a lot of same pieces mm -hmm. back, it was a totally different year. Um, I think the benefit going into this season is there is truly a hard reset with everything. Hard reset. New manager, new coaching staff, a lot of new players. Um, kind of a wiping, wiping the slate clean mentality which could be good which could be good I, th I don't think that was the case last year you know what's interesting though i think back to this too because preller at the end of the season we're like waiting for him to speak and he speaks and in his first public comments with the media i think it was over zoom like in an office or maybe in his home he was like melvin's going to be back like the first public comments were that the manager despite everything is actually going to be back for next year now of course we know what happened the giants expressed interest melvin left and maybe they'll be better off for it they absolutely may be better off for it but amazingly even off last year and all this i'm with you this real friction between melvin and preller preller to the media after the season said melvin will be back hmm. which is so interesting to me that that if the giants don't call is Melvin sitting in Peoria right now? If the Giants don't call, I guess so. And another thing too, um, Fernando Tatis Jr. was returning to this roster, and to start out, the one of the storylines was he's going to have to maybe earn some respect back from mm -hmm. teammates, kind of stay under yep. the radar, and not be a guy that is causing any trouble. I'm not saying that affected the team, but right. it I think affected Tatis from a standpoint of like, okay, I can't just focus on going and playing baseball. I have to focus on my image. I have mm -hmm. to focus on the things, right things what's to say. What's it going to be like on the road? What's it going to be like on the road? And Nobody talks about that anymore. And I thought he handled it pretty well. Too. Yeah, like you said, no yeah. one talks about it anymore. No and, one. And now this year, again, the, the wiping of the slate clean, I think Tatis can just go into the season having a full off season, being healthy for like the first time ever. I mean, when's the last time Tatis had a full off season where he was fully healthy? Never. Yeah. What in twenty seventeen? Because he was hurt. Even in twenty nineteen spring, he was getting hurt, wasn't he? He. Well, he was. Um, he was. I was, don't know if he was hurt no, in twenty nineteen spring, but he no, was, like, he was kind fine. of reckless in twenty nineteen spring. He was going from like second to home. Remember? He was, was insane. Yeah, he was reckless. But so 
But doesn't he also sound like so much more mature? And I remember he would laugh off every question. Well, that's what happened. Just recently, it's two years ago. Now he's like so like when well get, spoken. When you get older. That's so just what how happens. Old is, is he 24 yet? I think he's 24. 24 ish. I think he's 24. Um, but I, I I'm I'm expecting a big year from Tatis. I really am. I'm expecting an MVP year. I, that's high expectations, but that's what he's capable of. And he had one more, he had, we have one more uh clip in here from Tatis. He, uh, He's 25, by the way. Wow. He uh, talked about his upcoming season this year and the expectations for himself. With last year kind of being like a practice year, and the numbers were, they were okay. Should there be any question that you'd be back to being Fernando this year? <laughs> I just wanted to see. You know, I don't want to put any words out there, but um, I'm just going to say I, I really have a really good offseason. Um, my confidence is through the roof. And um, I just want them to sit down and see what I'm going to do this year. Not putting expectations on himself. Smart. Confidence through the roof. Let let it play out. I love that. And I don't know if it'll be a Cunha type year. That'd be amazing. But, imagine? <laughs> but he could have like that 2021 type season, mm -hmm. which is what? 40 plus home runs, 1,000 type OPS year. Yeah, we talked. I mean, all this offseason was about Juan Soto. All about Juan Soto. Still, it's a little about a little bit about Juan Soto because you're looking to try to find someone to replace Juan Soto in left field. But we haven't really talked about Fernando Tatis Jr. a lot, mm -hmm. as far as what he could bring to the table and what type of talent this team has, like what type of talent this Padres team has in Fernando Tatis Jr. He should be like seriously, he should be top three National League MVP in 2024. And if not, I'm going to be like, well. I was kind of hoping off a season like 2021 when he was a pup mm -hmm. that he was going to be a top three MVP guy like every year of his prime. Now, he's done that previously, like 2021. Yeah. But if he stays healthy and plays 150 games, then off last year, like that should springboard you back. There were reasons not to produce last year. 17 months off, yada, yada, yada. There's no real reasons now. You're 25 in your prime. You've done it previously. You put it all together. You could have that. 1,000 OPS, 45 home run season. That's why you know, Tatis having an MVP type of season from him at the plate goes such a long way. It really does. I'm not saying it's going to replace Juan Soto by any means because it's not. But whoever Tatis hits in the lineup, if he's a leadoff hitter or if he's hitting third or cleanup and you get a 2021 year, at whatever where he's hit and if you come out with a good year for Machado, man that could go a long long way i'm leading him off i probably he's, am too he's been great in his career Actually, as a leadoff man he's got good speed i know kim's been very good as a leadoff guy that's my other option that i would strongly consider something about power and speed at the top of the lineup that just goes really well together and i want the extra plate appearance for you know, I, I yeah, like I I prefer it, and he's done it previously, and he's excelled at it. Why not? You know why I would probably want Tatis to hit either third or cleanup. Okay, is because you don't have Juan Soto, and you need another bona fide run, middle of the order, middle of the order run mm -hmm. producer. Agreed. And if you put him lead off, how many opportunities is he truly going to get with runners in scoring position? to drive them home, especially with the way the bottom of this lineup will be looking like. Fair. That's where I'm banking on the 45 home runs. You say, well, that's crazy, John. We hit 42 as a 22-year-old. I mean, but he could still hit 45 home runs hitting third or fourth. True. And he would have way more RBI opportunities in those positions as well. I With the with the loss of Soto, if Soto was still on this team, lead off, absolutely. Off. But with the loss of Soto, I'm, I'm going either... Manny third, Tati's fourth, or flip flop because I want my two best guys to be in a position to drive home as many runs as possible. And we saw last year Xander Bogarts was put in those positions a lot and he failed miserably. Right. Well, you heard from Schilt. He can he can bat cleanup and he can bat leadoff. Oh, They're yeah. petitioning Major League Baseball for that. That's perfect. In 2024. Awesome. Let's hear from Joe Musgrove. What does he have to say about his injury riddle 2023 season? That's next on John and Jim.
All right, hey guys, it is Schaefer. I've been telling you about my friends over at Novo Brazil Brewing. They've partnered with the Mesa Foundation in a really get, uh, great co-branded product that is benefiting San Diego State men's and women's basketball players. They've got the brand new Aztecs Raspberry Kombucha that was taste tested late last year by Lamont Butler, who was on the show earlier today, Jaden Ledee, Micah Parrish, and others. Proceeds from sales of that kombucha product go directly to San Diego State men's and women's basketball players. In addition to that, Novo Brazil Brewing is just a terrific spot for San Diegans, for sports fans, for families. They've got great area locations. They've got the IB spot, Otay Ranch. They've got the brand new spot in Mission Valley. It opened up like a month ago. I've been there already a couple of times. It's a spectacular sports bar is what it is. They have everything you could possibly want, including the kombucha I was telling you about, but it's a 350 seat restaurant, full bar menu, 60 taps of Novo Brazil beer. They've got the kombucha. They have the seltzers. It's a great family spot because of their food. They've got great food, sandwiches, tacos, burgers, empanadas, salads, appetizers, Brazilian inspired entrees. You need to see the led screens in all of these locations. It's just spectacular. So for your weekend, you're watching sports, you're watching college hoops, NBA, what's ever going on. Make sure to get down to Novo Brazil Brewing for more information on their area locations. Check them out at NovoBrew.com. That's N-O-V-O-Brew.com. J.D. Gaucho, thanks for your super chat, man. Appreciate you guys that are here. Please subscribe if you are here. Live or on replay, we get to super chats during breaks. He says, uh, John, thoughts? First baseman DH, I don't even know this guy, Rintato Sasaki, number one ranked prep player in Japan. I did see the story. Rejecting the Nippon Professional Baseball League to play at Stanford. No NIL money. Faster path to the majors. I think we could see more of it, if that's the question. I think you could see prep players in Japan coming over earlier. Because right now you're seeing guys six years into their career, eight years into their career, right? So, like, Otani got here after playing professionally. There's a zillion examples of guys getting here after playing professionally. Will we see more prep players get here before they've turned pro? I think that's interesting. I think we could see more of it. Um, I don't know what to make of this player specifically, but – if he has success, J.D. Gatcho, to your point, like if this works for him, you'll see more of it. I think it's as simple as that. If this works, you'll see more of it. And the pipeline's crazy right now. Japan and Korea, uh, the pipeline to the major leagues right now is um, is as big as it's ever been. So thank you, J.D. Gatcho. Appreciate you, man. We will be back uh, in a moment. Thanks, man.
Soto thing. It's just a matter of the whole well, I have a better off anyway with that. Listen, you can say Soto didn't meet all expectations, but this idea that you're better without Juan Soto, the dude's going to go down as one of the great players to ever wear a Padres uniform or to play in baseball. So, like, uh, give me a break. Like, uh, every time someone's at the door, we always say, well, we don't want him. If Machado didn't sign the extension, oh, you don't want him. Soto gets traded, oh, we don't need him. Melvin's gone, I'd rather have Schilt. Right, but when you have the player, I'm not hearing that. But the second they're at the door, I start hearing that. The reason I say it is eight five eight says this. And Manny's still here. He says, by the way, Manny couldn't hit in any pressure situation in 2022 either. He just racked up biggish numbers in meaningless situations. He probably hits a ton of home runs in batting practice. Listen, we were critical of Manny Machado in 2023, but in 2022, I just looked it up. He had a 1,000 OPS with men in scoring position for the year. Had a 1,000 OPS. Don't tell me they were all meaningless. They went to the postseason. So, like, you you can't have it both ways. Why can't we just say Machado was good in 2022 and he wasn't good in 2023? You can say that. I would say that. Right? A lot of people would say that. I think even Manny Machado would say behind, that. Maybe behind closed doors would say that. Right. You didn't have a good year last year. But, he didn't. But he's still a really good player. And is Bob Melvin a bad manager? No. Bob Melvin's a good he's manager. He's not a bad manager. I agree with you. He's a good manager. And it didn't work out here. But the second that Bob leaves, the, the Bob, you know, is out of town. Terrible manager. Terrible manager. He sucks. Mike yeah. Schultz better. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if I, whatever. It's just, it's, it's hard because it's a little bit like boy who cries wolf. And what are, and then are these are the same people are going to say the second Schultz gone. Well, this guy, then this next guy's better. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's always like Snell next year is going to have like a four ERA. See, I told you fluke. Grass yeah. is always greener, guys. Yeah, so. it just seems like that. I mean, I don't even know what we're talking about. If I paid about guys, Machado, uh, I really don't. But we, this... we, we were talking about uh, the lineup for next season. Gotcha. Oh, so why hit him in pressures? I mean, man, Machado has to be in the middle of your order. Bad him ninth. There's no option. No. Other than Machado hitting in the middle of your lineup. I mean, that, that's that's the easiest job of Mike Schild. And it's an even year, so he's going to have the, have, hopefully. a great season. All right, Joe Musgrove today. This was interesting. Listen to what he had to say. This Joe Musgrove, remember last year, very up and down. A lot of it because of his health. Listen to Joe Musgrove earlier today in Peoria. That was frustrating, but, you know, it's it's my own fault. You know, I had a little more careful in the weight room at the start of the season, and maybe some of these other injuries don't pop up. And I know breaking the toe and getting back as soon as I did kind of set me back a little bit, rushing through that rehab to, to try to get back for opening day. Um, things kind of snowballed on me a little bit, but... It's lesson learned and, you know, take it into this season with a, a clearer approach on, you know, just the, the risk management throughout the course of the season. It's my fault. A little bit. But, but I, I give him credit for it. It's what a captain should say. Yeah. Oftentimes you think injuries are injuries, but he took accountability for the injuries. Well, the only way you learn is kind of by failing sometimes, mm -hmm. kind of by having, you know, things not go your way or having mistakes or, doing things that are wrong like a lot of times you're not going to learn things unless you make mistakes mm -hmm. and so i'm sure he learned a lot last year um what not to do when it comes to either rehab or working out or whatever the case may be even though i've seen him on, in you know, instagram videos still working out with no shoes on yeah but remember that in mexico too did yeah. he burn the bottom of his feet he on did. the field he yeah. did but i'm also i i would bet a lot that there's more of an awareness on okay i'm i don't have my shoes on i always usually work out barefoot but i'm going to make it abundantly clear that i am aware that i don't have shoes on and i'm going to do everything i can to make sure i don't like hurt myself give me the pitching matchups in korea is uh, it darvish yamamoto game one? Oh my gosh i think it's musgrove yamamoto game one game two um Who's the who's on the Dodgers rotation? Yeah, that's a good point. The rotation, oh, honestly, Glass for all now. the spending. I know, but for all the spending, man, there are questions there. Yamamoto never in the big leagues. Glass now injuries. I mean, I listen, it might work, but and it's gonna be totally different. Like you can start uh you Darvish game one in South Korea and still start you Darvish game one you opening day in San, uh, San Diego. So I think the dream matchup for a lot of baseball fans would be Yamamoto versus Darvish, game one. Or game two. I think that's gotta be game one. And then game two is Glass now versus Musgrove. I think that that sounds like a good game too. That sounds like a right? good, good pitching matchups to me. 
Well, it'll be interesting. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Do those guys get two starts before others get one? Yeah, of course. You do? You push the extra because you're pushing March 20th now. You can buy an extra start out of Darvish and Musgrove, but they're both coming off injuries. You it's just fine. push it. Those are your, those are yeah. your horses. Those are your aces. You, I'm interested you, to see what you happens. You need, if you can get an extra start out of those guys. And, which they can. I am doing it. Yeah. Like, they oh, can literally get, yeah. Do we want to get an extra start out of Darvish and Musgrove, or do we want to pitch pitch Waldron and Avila or whoever <laughs> right, else? Right. You know what I mean? Like, yep. So, yeah, absolutely. I'm starting Darvish, Musgrove, Darvish or, and mm-hmm. Musgrove in South Korea, mm-hmm. and then Darvish, Musgrove, whatever order you want, on opening day here in San Diego versus the Giants. Dude, how much star power potentially is All in this it. March 20th Otani and Yamamoto and Kim and Darvish? Just the influence, obviously, in Asia in Best general. But then you man. add in, yeah, Machado and Bogarts. Tatis. I mean, it's pretty incredible is what it is. Yeah. Um, it's amazing. I can't wait to see it. Jackson Merrill. <laughs> well, we'll see. J- Jacob Marcy. <laughs> Jacob Marcy. We just Ethan went through. Salas. We just went through like a fictional lineup, and we're missing some pieces because AJ Preller is missing some pieces. It sounds good, like one through six. We could parse through it, and then we're like, "Oh, here's seven and eight. And we mentioned like, "Go, go through it. Go through it." So, well, you said, and I don't disagree with it at all. You were saying maybe Bogart's leading off to Kim, to Machado, to Tatis, Campusano, Cronenworth, right? As your top six? In some order. Yeah, we can figure the, out the order. Then we're like, okay, maybe a rookie. Just throw one rookie in there. Merrill. Mm-hmm. Then Profar. Mm-hmm. And then your DH. Yeah. Who we couldn't really identify. Well, that team doesn't have one right now. So all of a sudden, you're six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. It, is Cronenworth, Profar, Merrill. Marcy. Marcy or this yeah. DH we don't know about. So that's where. If Manny's DHing to start the year, then you have to add in. Like, okay, Kim's at third. Yep. Who's playing first? Is Cronenworth yep. back at second? Is Are they going to put Profar at first and have Merrill and Marcy in the outfield? Right. Like, what? what's their bench look like? Their Again, bench looks today. like... today. Oh, I know, it's Th- today. This is a team that doesn't have players on its Well, that just roster. shows that there are still some massive holes on this roster. Yeah, there are. I mean, what does their bench look like, John? It's non-existent right uh, now. It's the backup catcher, Higgy. Yeah. It's a Zokar. Okay. There it is. There's your bench. As of today, non-roster guys fighting yeah. for jobs. Wow, that's, that's their bench. bench. I think I'm we're probably missing someone. Ugh. Ugh. All right. <laughs> On the other side, Jim's back page. Stay with us. All right, lower mortgage rates are here, and smart homeowners are wiping out all their credit card debt with help from Loan Pronto. Hey, guys, it is Schaefer, and right now Loan Pronto has a cash-out refinance rate of just 5.49%. It's a huge drop, so you can get refinanced now, get cash out of your home's equity to wipe out all those credit cards and other high-interest loans. You can save hundreds every month with lower payments, or if you still have a mortgage rate in the threes, you can use Loan Pronto's Equity Express line of credit just get the cash you need and leave your primary mortgage intact. Loan Pronto can get you 50, 75, 100, even $200,000 in just a matter of days. Bottom line is this Loan Pronto, they've got several options to help you erase debt and take control of your finances. If you call today, you can even skip your next two mortgage payments. Call Loan Pronto right now. Here's the number 619 207 4336. Write this down for Loan Pronto, 619-207-4336 or LoanPronto.com. 619-207-4336, Equal Housing Lender, NMLS, 1661781, 5.49% has 6.39% APR, subject to lender approval.
Did we even mention today that the Niners fired their defensive coordinator during our show? We did during the division. We talked about it all during um, like all of his updates. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I mean, hire Bill Belichick. Oh, yeah, yeah. We talked about it for 30 minutes. And not a scapegoat. Oh, yeah. Actually, we talked about it for like an hour. Yeah. Well, the Niners fired their defensive coordinator. Right. It was a wrong fit from the beginning. They did not mesh well. And yeah. who was a logical candidate? Give me someone other than Belichick. Give me two names. <sighs> it, probably something, somebody in Chargers internal. guy. Probably internal, internal guy. Chargers guy, Brandon Staley. Yeah. Uh, another name out there, Mike Vrabel. Yeah. I don't know Success if he's a successful head coach. Yeah, but I don't know if he's like a true defensive coordinator. I think they might be looking for somebody they can keep longer than just one year. Gotcha. Makes sense. Unless it's Belichick. Yeah, if they hired Vrabel, he'd be there for like gone. one year yeah. and yeah. gone. Right. Yeah. Same thing with maybe Belichick, but I think that might be worth it. Yeah, I agree. I can play one year. Hey, that. Bill, you can do whatever you want on defense. <laughs> I yeah, exactly. never, I am never going to override you. Uh, by the way, programming announcements, Bob Scanlon Friday will join us from Peoria. I believe he's traveling tomorrow. Bob Scanlon will join us in the 3 o'clock hour, I think around 3.10 on Friday. Kevin Acey is in Peoria. He's written a lot. He wrote today on Tatis. He wrote yesterday on Machado. So Kevin Acey will join us Friday as well. So a big Friday show. Also Friday, San Diego State, New Mexico. Blackout, as Jim mentioned earlier, VA House Arena. So a huge game at 7 p.m. We'll have pregame coverage beginning on John and Jim at 3 p.m. Then officially at 6 p.m. And right now, let's get to this. You might not know this name, John, but everybody should know this name. Okay. William Bill Post. Do you know who that is? Bill Post? Bill Post. I don't. Brent? I'll look it up. Brent knows everything. Will so this is surprising. Post. I want to say it either has something to do with cereal or TV. You're on the right track with cereal. It's not cereal, but it is a breakfast item. How does Brent know that? I don't know. Because well, I was just thinking of post breakfast cereal. Gotcha. Okay. He is Bill Post, the creator of Pop Tarts. Oh, oh okay. Bill Post passed away today at the age of 96. 96 for the creator of John just had his Darts. first pop. I did. They're so good. They're the best. They're so good. They're amazing. They really are. So And you don't have to do do you guys is this controversial or do you agree with this? It doesn't have to be toasted, right? No, no but if I it is I, cold all the time. Yeah. yeah, but if it is toasted, it's a better. Little, it's I well, like it, it toasted. There's some I think are better toasted and there's some I think that are better cold. Interesting. Very interesting. What's your favorite pop tart? What pop tart did you have for the first time? Well, it was, it was the day of the pop tart bowl. Oh, yeah, really? I was so enamored. So you something. ate one. S'mores. Uh, yeah, you should have a raspberry one. Uh, yeah, or strawberry. Yeah. Strawberry. Something too. with a fruit filling. Yeah. Okay. What's your favorite, Brent? Don't say like we did chocolate. that. The one. No, we did. I don't like the chocolate ones because I'll have the graham cracker crust. I don't like that. Uh, I cool. like the weird seasonal ones. Like we talked about this once. Like pumpkin the, spice. No, like peach cobbler mm, and. Uh, What's the other one that they had one time? Uh, like Boston cream pie donuts. Uh, we get really weird ones because my friends back home get really jealous because they don't get they get the basic pop tarts out there. It's like right, these are like strawberry. exotic yeah, it's like frosted strawberry and brown. What do you sugar. love? What do you like? I love frosted strawberry. Frosted strawberry. Frosted okay. strawberry. That's my like. You would eat it as a snack or as like a breakfast? I would eat it as a snack. I haven't had a pop tart snack in a long dessert. time though. A okay. long time. But I no, just, they're good. Oh, so they're good. really good. Taco Bell is offering a new menu item, John, this okay. week. Yeah. Heart-shaped burritos. The fast food chain plans to introduce its cheesy chicken crispinata this Thursday. The crispinata, C-R-I-S-P-A-N-A-D-A. Mm -hmm. I'm looking it up. First mm -hmm. tested in Tennessee last year is Taco Bell's take on an empanada. Shocker. Well, they used to have those. Okay. Um, and the restaurant says it's cheesy chicken crispinata consists of chicken slow cooked with garlic, tomato, and onion alongside a three cheese blend of Monterey pepper jack, cheddar, and mozzarella cheese. The menu item takes inspiration from the beloved empanada and is fused with Taco Bell's flavors fans already love. I think it sounds good. I'm looking at an empanada right now. Yeah, it sounds good. I mean, is that a, a must-have at Taco Bell? 
I mean, I would try it. You try it. Yeah. It's uh, I'd rather they just brought back the ample apple empanadas they used to have. Mm, the cheesy chicken, cheesy chicken, crispinata will be priced at three dollars and forty nine cents. The item will also be available for a limited time, according to Taco Bell. They're very creative. I'll say that, right? Taco Bell always has new menu items. Well, here's the thing, John. Uh, <laughs> most fast food places are creative when yeah. it comes to menu items. They're always testing yeah. things. I think the only place that never tests anything is like in and out I mean, they have like three items. They have they their staple. Anything in and then they have the secret menu items and good to go. Did, okay. you, did you know the secret menu items at the in and out Burger? I don't know what the, the non-secret menu items are. I assume right, burger yeah. and fries. Well, uh, yeah, but what's the secret? Like, yo, double wink, and then all of a sudden it gives you a crispy chicken empanada. If you asked for a protein style burger, they have it wrapped in lettuce. If you uh, ask for a animal style, it's a special, like special grilled onion sauce. Like they put a special sauce on it. I don't, I don't know what the sauce is, hmm, consists thousand of. Island thousand, thousand island dressing. Okay. Right. With grilled onion. What else could I ask? You could ask for a grilled cheese, which is just, you know, the, grilled cheese, the grilled cheese sandwich. Yeah. Oh, so I could go there for a grilled cheese. You can yeah. Get, Do they have um shakes or something? You or can no? get Neapolitan shakes on the okay. street menu. That's yeah. what I always get. Okay. Um, so yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. Um, speaking of fast food restaurants, John, mm -hmm. Valentine's Day special fast food items. Okay. From special fast food restaurants. Mm-hmm. Chick-fil-A, they're offering heart-shaped trays filled with select menu items for Valentine's Day. You can get um, chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets. You can get chicken strips. You can get chicken sandwiches. Um, and they will come in a platter style Valentine's Day heart-shaped platter. Okay. Makes sense. Um, then moving over to PF Chang's, you can get free breakup dumplings. <laughs> what does that entail? P.F. Chang's is offering free dump. Ah, uh, dumplings. Lings. Yeah. Anyone has been recently dumped. If you've been dumped, P.F. Chang's wants to provide you with some love. Six free dump lings to anyone who has been recently dumped. To receive the free shrimp or pork dumplings, newly single people must text change, wait, yeah, change dumplings to 855-697-618. That's, that's like the end thing this year is with the yeah, breakup, store. Dumping, the breakup. The breakup food. But is there of, proof of purchase? Do you need to show a text message where yeah. the girl like yells at you? You need, you need to uh, share your breakup story with a screenshot of the breakup oh text. Oh my gosh. That's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. And we already talked about it the hot uh, honey goodbye pie from um, Pizza Hut. So there you go. Happy Valentine's I Day. I might have Aaron text me like, hey, we're broken up. Don't do that. I know. We're back to our three for Brent and Jim. I'm John. Keep it here. San Diego Sports 760. Okay, bye. Peace out. Happy Valentine's Day.